and welcome uh, members of uh, the portfolio committee and uh, immediately move to our guests who are from the provincial government of KwaZulu Natal. The MEC, as I was informed, will be part of this. MEC Zikalala uh, and the team. Uh, we also expect uh, provincial treasury, and I'm sure they are going to introduce them themselves as we proceed. We also expect uh, the executive mayor of Umkungundlo Food District Municipality, as well as uh, the one that will be focusing on Sunduzi Local Municipality. I'm informed as well that uh, because the municipality is not a delegated municipality, uh, national treasury would be part of the meeting. But of course, the presentations would be led by the province where there are questions uh, directed at them. Uh, uh, national treasury would also respond. Um, Auditor General's office is also here, uh, as we usually do when we uh, engage municipalities, as well as Salka would expect them to uh, say something as well, so that we can have a full picture of what is happening, what is planned, and what is working and not working. And uh, uh, that's the it's it's a full house actually uh, attendance is uh, at that level, but I would expect first let's start with apologies, uh, uh, portfolio committee secretary. Uh, any apologies? Good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, everybody. Yes, these apologies from. Honorable Liriekush, he's on study leave until the 2nd of November. Honorable Khurunavagov will leave the meeting at 10.30. We have an apology from the acting MEC for finance, Ms. Setuli Baloui, will not be able to attend the meeting due to a cabinet meeting today. Um, the department will be represented by Mr. Farad Kasimji, the Chief Director for Municipal Finance. The minister and the DG is attending the pres presidential summit on gender-based violence and femicide. Ms. Paul Mohali, acting DDG. Team Kadi Ming um, is busy with other line functions in KZN and the Mapela will also not be able to attend the meeting due to prior commitment. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you. Um, any other apology, honorable members? Uh, anybody? Sorry, I'm, I'm on my way to the doctor. Okay. So that's, that's what I was uh, asking for. You are on your way to see a doctor, Honorable Abanchaba. No further apology. And um, generally, the meeting is about, uh, it's, it's briefing about uh, Msunduzi local municipality would be briefed by the provincial government. Uh, the order of the briefing would be like this. It will start with the provincial cocta and treasury, might be a combined presentation. After that, it would be the Auditor General's office, then the, the National Cooperative Recording stopped. Traditional Affairs, the DCOC, Salga, Um Kungundlovu, after that, and then the last would be Um Sunduzi local municipality, oh. that would be the order that would want to follow. Recording in progress. That will not be general, will not be general about it. Uh, we'll immediately welcome the embassy 
and they yeah. allow the MEC to direct, especially at that uh, point one, as to how first welcome MEC. I would expect you to also say Recording something. stopped. And immediately thereafter, kickstart the process directed by yourself. Over to you, MBC. Thanks, uh, Honorable Chair. I believe I'm in progress. I'm you coming are... in, members, but uh, I'm... am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Thank you, Chair. No, as you have indicated, we will be reporting on Umsundus and Umkungundus. But I've got a challenge because we have the Executive Council today. And I thought I should just come to uh, pledge my commitment and preparedness to account and always appear before the committee, but request that I be excused so that uh, I attend the executive council and the team uh, will present. We've got DDG uh, and the entire team that will take us through, that will take the committee through uh, the presentations. I'm not sure, honorable chair, whether my uh, apology could be, uh, is accepted. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, in fact, when you pronounce and say apology, it is usually given that it should be accepted. Uh, but unless there's somebody who thinks, but the focus is Sunduzi and um, Kungundrov has already indicated. So there might be nothing but uh, members, that's the apology. Uh, uh, normally, we have had uh, experiences before uh, when somebody apologizes. They say there's a special question for him, but I don't see seem to see any hand. Uh, we know, actually, that Wednesdays are executive council meetings, uh, yes. cabinet meetings. So you are released, uh, Honorable. Uh, Thank you. Uh, let me see. Thank you. Can the DDG take over? Uh, DDG, can you take over? Greetings, Honorable Chairperson. Um, my apologies. We've just received uh, an, an indication from the DDG that he's currently awaiting um, to be accepted from the lobby. Uh, if the secretaries can kindly ac uh, assist the DDG. Thank you. Please assist. Are you able to assist the DDG? Uh, Portfolio Committee Secretary? The person, it looks like the, the person is actually struggling to connect because it does say they are joining. Mm-hmm. Then what should we do in the meantime? Honorable Mkono, is there anybody uh, who can, uh, in the meantime, stand in for the TTG? I don't think there's, there was only one person from the uh, provincial government.
Thank you, Honorable uh, Chairperson. We kindly request um, Usis Bushle Ali to lead the delegation. Thank you. In the Agreed. Agreed. Ali. Is is Ali in? It doesn't look so, Chairperson. It doesn't look like she's in as well. Uh, how do we kickstart this uh, uh, presentation now? Uh, because we expect the province to start. And, uh, do we, we do have their presentation. Uh, Chairperson, we sincerely apologize for these glitches. May we kindly request just, to, just to, to ascertain what is happening uh, from the colleagues. Thank you. We sincerely apologize. Yes, I see the hand of uh, Joey Krishna from Cogta. I allow you, can you say something? Good morning, Honorable Chairperson, um, Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee. Our apologies for, um, for the delay and the, the technical glitches. Um, with your permission, uh, I'm the Chief Director of Municipal Finance uh, in COGTA. Uh, if the presentation is flighted, I'm happy to uh, commence with the actual okay. presentation with your permission. Yes, I allow you. Can we get the presentation flighted? Thank you very much, Chairperson. As we get to the beginning of the slide, um, we would like to inform members that we'll be providing an overview report uh, on the uh, in constitutional intervention at Nsunduzi Municipality. Uh, Chairperson, I think this is uh, not the presentation. This is a state of Ngunun Global Municipality that's being flighted. So uh, we, we will just correct that. It's the institution that we'll talk specifically to. A chair, by way of background, um, we go into the reasons for the actual intervention um, that we have at Msunduzi Municipality. It's an intervention in terms of section 139.1b of the constitution. And I'm on slide three. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the, the actual reasons, uh, firstly, was the failure by the municipality to hold councillors accountable. Um, and we found that there was weak governance. So the critical meetings uh, at the municipality were not taking place as they ought to have due to the absence of councillors. Uh, consequence management was not being implemented. Uh, and there was, as a result of these governance challenges, there was a very weak oversight uh, over management and in particular, the management of conditional grants. The municipality at that time uh, had been uh, underspending significantly 
on its infrastructure grants, and that would obviously mean that service delivery would be impacted. The council also failed to exercise oversight over the financial management situation at the municipality and the uh, cash flow and the financial status was very weak with the municipality having and had an overdraft at that time. There was no steps taken to address unauthorized, irregular, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Um, and uh, it, to that extent, the investigations required in terms of Section 32 of the MFMA were not uh, done. Uh, and there was obviously no accountability uh, and consequence management against management themselves or any person as is required by the law to, uh, to answer for that. Um, there was also numerous service delivery related challenges besetting the city. Uh, there was waste management issues, roads, uh, uh, you know, potholes being reported, street maintenance, street lights, uh, electricity services, outages um, that were being uh, experienced within the uh, municipality with various community complaints. And then uh, finally, there were allegations of uh, malfeasance, maladministration uh, that were also identified at the municipality. Um, so these were the, the, this was the, the basis of the intervention. If we can go to the next slide, we then talk about the um, resolution of the Provincial Executive Council in this regard. The Executive Council assumed the functions in terms of sections 51, 56 and 57 of the Municipal Systems Act, uh, as well as those related to financial management and service delivery, particularly relating to project management to ensure that the MIG grants would be spent and that infrastructure and uh, would be uh, addressed and service delivery would continue. The MEC for Cooperative Governance uh, appointed a representative, a ministerial representative, uh, and a provincial recovery plan was developed for implementation. Um, part of the recovery plan uh, would have to include as resolved by the cabinet that the financial systems policies and procedures, uh, including the um, implementation of cost containment measures would be uh, undertaken, that the ministerial representative would be a signatory to the municipality's primary bank account, the establishment uh, of an interim finance committee, which would be chaired by the ministerial representative. And this was particularly to get a hands on the cash flow situation at the municipality, uh, to monitor the cash flow and manage it, and to approve and disapprove purchase requisitions, uh, as well as the payment of creditors uh, et cetera, within the municipality. And this committee was uh, meant to meet on a quarterly basis uh, as required by the Provincial Executive Council. Further on the next slide, uh, the administrator or ministerial representative was required to implement governance systems and procedures. Um, <clears throat> this was to ensure oversight over the administration and to that extent would have to ratify decisions taken by council, the executive committee, portfolio committees of council, the municipal manager, and section 56 managers uh, would, in terms of delegated or original authority. Uh, they would also have to ensure, he would also have to ensure that the local government disciplinary regulations relating to senior managers would be um, implemented and to also implement the recommendations of all investigations into maladministration, fraud and corruption. Uh, remedial action plans to address the audit queries would have to be addressed and were part of the recovery plan. And then projects, particularly unblocking of projects relating to service delivery, which had stalled, needed to then be fast-tracked and implemented. This, uh, uh, would then lead to the municipality improving its operations, uh, addressing the maintenance programs, and in particular, addressing issues of waste management roads and electricity maintenance. Chair, on the next slide, we provide a summary of the indicators for the municipality. Um, and this is progress that has been achieved to date. Uh, <clears throat> we know that, uh, and, and we are reporting as at the current uh, status, 
In terms of the uh, intervention, the audit outcome, uh, initially the municipality had received uh, negative audit outcomes. Uh, in the last three years, there was a disclaimer, but in the latest 2020-2021 financial year, the municipality received an unqualified audit. Um, we're hoping that the municipality is able to sustain that during the current audit that is underway, but that will be obviously released once the AG has completed the process. The budget was previously unfunded or deemed to be unfunded um, given the cash flow challenges, but we're happy to report as it has been assessed by the provincial treasury for the current financial year 22-23 that the budget is funded. There are, however, vacancies that still exist in the municipality, uh, and these are critical posts uh, because they relate to the service delivery functional area. The general manager technical uh, services uh, is, is vacant since July, and the general manager electricity is vacant for more than a year since July 2021. So these are two critical posts that uh, need to be filled with highly competent and, uh, persons so that service delivery can, uh, can be uh, addressed. The MIG expenditure was at 100%. Uh, colleague, if we can go back, I'm still on the same slide. And then there were two Section 106 reports that have been implemented with 15 of the 17 recommendations implemented. Consequence manager, uh, management uh, was also fully implemented uh, by the ministerial representative in conjunction with the municipality. There is stability. We have a MM in place now. We have a chief financial officer in place um, and the corporate and community services posts are also full. Uh, on the slide before you, it gives you the trend of the audit outcomes as indicated qualified and unqualified uh, in the last two years. Uh, the audit action plan, there were seven audit findings. Uh, two had been resolved and five were in progress. Um, these were because they need to be uh, confirmed as the opening balances and closing balances, which had to be corrected by the audit uh, that is currently underway. Mega expenditure and the uh, water service improvement grant uh, funding, as well as INEP funding, is reported uh, for the 21 22 financial year ending June. Uh, the MIG and uh, water service improvement grant was at 100% expenditure. The INEP funding uh, at, uh, for electricity was at 76%, which is why we're also saying that it's critical that the post of electricity general manager and technical are filled uh, to ensure that we're able to manage this more effectively. Chairperson, on the next slide, um, we have given uh, the other indicators. Uh, as indicated, the budget is funded. Uh, the unauthorized irregular fruitless and wasteful expenditure, um, the total closing balance at the end of the previous audited period was 2.7 billion rand. Uh, the total um, reported as at the end of June this year is 1.7 billion rand. So council has been able to address over a billion rand or 1.1 billion rand uh, in unauthorized irregular fruitless and wasteful expenditure. There was, however, 26 million rands worth of um, irregular expenditure incurred during the year, and that was attributed to ongoing contracts that need to be uh, terminated and, um, and, and new contracts instituted. As far as the financial uh, viability of the municipality is concerned, we are concerned uh, because the ratios that we are reflecting here uh, reflect negatively. Firstly, the cash flow position is still extremely weak. The municipality has a cash coverage of less than one month, 0.42, so literally half a month of cash flow coverage. Uh, collection rate is 77%. It ought to be 95%. Uh, it fluctuates month to month, so um, it was slightly higher, it's gone down. Um, but it still has not reached the 95% uh, benchmark. Employee related costs are well within the norm at 24%. Um, off grave concern uh, is the ESCOM debt, a rear debt that has accumulated. 
uh, and as at uh, current date, the municipality, uh, as at the end of August, the municipality was owing 202 million uh, rand to ESCOM. Uh, that amount rose in September to 400 million and it, it fluctuates again as payments are made, uh, but it is still in arrears uh, and a payment plan is being negotiated, which COPTA is facilitating. Uh, we've also done a cash flow analysis to make sure that whatever payment arrangements are negotiated and agreed with ESCOM are in fact um, credible and, uh, and that the municipality will be able to sustain payments. Water board debt to Ungeni Water is also sitting at 329 million. And again, with the cash flow analysis, COGTA and COGTA support uh, payment ar arrangements will be made. Chairperson, uh, in terms of the summary of the progress on the next slide of the intervention plan, uh, the council and all the committees are stable uh, since the 2021 local government elections. The UIFW, as indicate, uh, we are starting to address that, although we still need to investigate um, certain uh, amounts of UIFW. Investigations are underway in progress through internal audit and external service providers at the municipality, and that will be addressed. Uh, there are strategies that have been developed to address the electricity outages in the, in the city uh, and surrounding e uh, areas. A network development plan uh, is in place uh, to address the issues of aging and overloaded infrastructure. And we are working in collaboration with ESCOM, NICE, and business to address electricity issues. Um, in consultation with ETIA, uh, Economic Development, Tourism, and Environmental Affairs, the uh, New England Road landfill site compliance has improved su substantially. It was also an audit query that was raised by the Auditor General. In fact, it was a material irregularity raised and it has been addressed to the satisfaction also of the Auditor General with a plan, a uh, sustainability plan in place. Whilst there has been uh, progress to achieve the unqualified audit opinion, uh, we are so concerned about the precarious financial pos position as indicated through the ratios that we have presented. Um, and we have as COGTA to ensure that we are able to implement the, the turnaround plan we're able to support the municipality in accordance with our mandates uh, in terms of Section 154 of the Constitution. Uh, we have deployed financial experts to the municipality, as well as engineering experts to assist with a range of matters. Chairperson, the specialist support that we have provided is on the next slide. Uh, it does indicate that um, there has also been uh, colleagues, if we can move the slides for the members. Um, in relation to uh, Umgeni Water, there has been support um, to deal with the water service issues. Um, Umgeni Water is leading uh, based on an, in, uh, an intervention by the National Minister of Water and Sanitation, uh, who has issued a directive in terms of Section 63 of the Water Services Act. Uh, and that is to provide hands-on support in relation to the Darvel sewer project. COGTA support uh, is the ministerial representative, a technical expert, a financial expert, a governance expert, uh, and they work in conjunction with the ministerial representative. We have also as COGTA provided grant funding for repairs and maintenance of aged infrastructure, uh, particularly to uh, accelerate the infrastructure renewal program and an amount of 15 million rand has been provided for electricity infrastructure upgrade. Also, uh, the MIG funding um, is being managed effectively towards the accelerated um, electricity renewal program. MISA is also providing strategic support uh, through an electrical engineer and has allocated 8 million rand for a clean up uh, of the municipality. Um, as far as DWS, is concerned through the Water Service Improvement Grant and the Regional Bulk Infrastructure Grant. Um, funding has been provided and the um, allocations over the 2021 and the MTEF period are reflected there, They're reflecting an increase from 40 million to 70.4 million uh, over a four-year period. 
and they have uh, also allocated uh, capacity uh, through the assistant project manager, which will assist to uh, ensure that these grants are adequately managed and spent. Asset management uh, and budget management support has been provided as part of the uh, Section 139.4 intervention by Provincial Treasury. Um, and they have deployed internal uh, municipal officials to address this particular issue. As far as the specialist support is concerned, uh, there are other support uh, that is provided on the next slide. And this is done through internal uh, units of, co of COGTA. Uh, it includes uh, financial management support, support to impacts, training and orientation of counselors, ongoing training of, of impact, the skills audit, um, support during the establishment of ward committees and the municipal rapid response teams. Uh, SALGA has allocated a financial resource to uh, support also in the training of our municipalities. We have commenced with the revival of the Back to Basics program and in particular the Masakane campaign to address uh, service delivery, delivery issues uh, as well as to deal with revenue enhancement. Um, there has been skills transfer through the financial experts within the Budget and Treasury Office. Um, the CETA, uh, there has been funding provided for an internship program, and then the negative impact uh, and lack of infrastructure uh, is being supported uh, through preparation of business plans to access various funding uh, for PMUs, operations and maintenance and asset management. Chairperson, um, in conclusion, the MEC has also engaged uh, amongst uh, a number of engagements that have been held uh, by the Provincial Executive Council with the municipality through the MEC champion, as well as the MEC for COGTA, um, the most recent being in September, where um, the intervention progress was discussed, the gaps have been uh, discussed in relating to finance and service delivery, and the um, um, turnaround plan was discussed. Uh, there is an acknowledgement of the challenges therefore facing the municipality. They are complex. Um, this is a large municipality. Uh, it is our second largest in the province and um, it will take uh, a short while uh, to, to address some of these issues. Um, the municipality was given three months. That would be to the end of December to show tangible progress. Uh, and we will then engage the municipality again in uh, January to assess uh, the status. Uh, we are receiving um, regular reports through the ministerial representative and through the support teams at the municipality. Chairperson, um, I will end the presentation there. Uh, a more detailed report on, on the um, key focus areas. Each key focus areas has been submitted for information purposes to the committee. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, I think members were taking notes. Uh, we will now move to the next presentation because all these would be talking to each other. Can we now ask for the Auditor General's uh, Office uh, Unit leader in uh, KZN, Ms. Noma Lungel on KZ. Welcome. And uh, I will immediately hand over to you. You will introduce your colleagues if there are any. Thanks. Over to you. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. And good morning to Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee. My name is Noma Lungel Mkize, as you have indicated, Chairperson. I am not alone. I am accompanied by the Deputy Positionate Leader of uh, KZN Office of the Auditor General, or Mr. Kabiso Matala, and also the Senior Manager who is responsible uh, for the um, audit of um, Sunduzi Municipality, um, who will also um, lead the presentation, or Mr. Tlanganani Makanyela. Uh, Chairperson, per your permission, I would like to uh, then hand over to uh, Mr. Langanani Makanyelo, who will take us through the presentation, Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, um, Mr. Simkeza. Good morning uh, to yourself, Honorable Chairperson. Um, 
Good morning to the honorable members of the committee, the leadership of the province, um, the colleagues from the municipality, and the supporting departments uh, in the province. I will try to summarize quickly the slides. What we have here, Chairperson, is the summary of the local of the audit outcomes from Sondoza municipality um, as uh, we uh, ended the audit in 2021. We are at the moment busy with uh, the 2022 audit and um, in that process is still um, ongoing. We have not made any significant uh, conclusions that we, 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 we are able to share with this committee at this present moment. On the next slide, we have our reputation promise. I will assume um, the committee is familiar with our mission and our vision. So I will move to the next slide. Um, on this slide, what we have, um, honorable members, is the accountability uh, ecosystem, um, which is part of our um, um, sort of um, vision as the AGSA. Um, what we aim to see, what we hope to see um, also happening in the space of um, uh, the public sector. What we hope for is um, all the structures as depicted in the team, um, being able to share the insights among um, everyone, all the role players, and each and every one of these role players um, actively playing their roles in terms of what they have been entrusted for. Uh, entrusted for in terms of the act. And if we all play our roles as uh, included here, um, we should be able to create a situation where our happiness level as the citizens of this country um, are at a higher level than they are at the moment. On the next slide, it's table of contents. What I'm just going to highlight, uh, Chairperson, uh, on, the, on the slide below, um, uh, what we have here is our key message. Um, uh, basically, in terms of our key message, we, we try to summarize here on this slide um, the audit outcomes um, uh, of the municipality at a high level. Um, the first block um, after the audit basically speaks to what we have done, which is the audit of financial statements, the audit of the predetermined objectives, and compliance with key legislation. In addition, for this municipality, we also implemented the PAA uh, amendments um, as part of the audit process. What we found in terms of the audit outcome is on the far right of the slide. Um, at a high level, um, the, audit, the municipality received an unqualified audit opinion on the financial statements, um, which basically says the financial statements that went public as published on the annual report, um, we had no material misstatements. Uh, on the, the next one is material findings on the usefulness and real, uh, reliability of the annual performance report. Um, the annual performance report had material um, errors as published on the annual report for 2021. Uh, the next bullet point speaks to non-compliance. Uh, there is numerous non-compliance we identified during the audit process, touching on those five areas listed there. And then um, there is challenges relating to going concern. Uh, as my colleague has cited, we'll provide our uh, insights in terms of um, how we see the situation and that. And then there is certain material irregularities we raised and notified um, to the accounting officer during the audit process. We will cover that as well. Um, as an additional point, there is um, understanding of um, the capital budget, which we noted uh, during the audit process. And this is a critical chairperson as it speaks to um, service delivery of the municipality and um, the direction that um, the council would have given in terms of approving um, uh, the budget. So the understanding basically touches on those uh, objectives that the council would have um, intended to achieve during that performance year. 
and there were certainly areas of um, accountability uh, failures. If you look on um, the blue uh, block there, we therefore highlight, uh, we're just highlighting there that access to service delivery um, is, is, is key uh, in terms of this municipality um, due to the size of the municipality and also in terms of the mandate um, uh, given to this municipality as the municipality is basically responsible for water, uh, certain functions in terms of electricity, housing, um, and roads, amongst other things. So it's critical for this municipality to improve um, governance in the municipality uh, in order to create a platform where uh, service delivery can be properly um, 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 executed. Um, there are areas of uh, concerning areas of accountability, which we have noted. So there is a, 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 a serious need for to, to improve accountability within the municipality. And um, there is needs to be improvement in terms of um, corrective actions and consequence management in the municipalities in terms of it being implemented um, effectively and timely. On the next slide, on the next slide, we just highlight um, the three areas which we audited compared to what we had reported in prior years. In terms of the audit opinion, it was an improvement uh, on 2021 uh, from 2020, uh, with the municipality moving from qualified to unqualified opinion. Uh, material misstatements were still reported on the financial statements, which basically says the financial statements that were submitted to us were incorrect and they relied on the audit process um, to move to a situation where uh, the correct, um, I mean, the set that was published on the annual report was um, had no material misstatements. On the performance report, there was a regression. Uh, if you compare it to the 2020 uh, conclusion, um, in the, on the 2020, we had no material findings in the audit report on the annual performance report we audited. On 2021, there were material um, adjustments or, or, or on that uh, annual performance report. And then there were material corrections corrected in both years in relation to the annual performance report on compliance. Um, in both years, we still had material findings in the audit, in the audit report relating to non-compliance. On the next slide, we, we touched briefly on the metals that we highlighted on the audit report, either as a going concern and emphasis of metals. Um, in the audit report, um, the first one being um, a material uncertainty relating to going concern. And we are highlighting here that the municipality is not in a, a, a financial uh, state that, uh, um, uh, that, that gives assurance that uh, to the municipality will continue to operate in the near future. And this is mainly uh, due to the municipality having not properly implemented its debt uh, control policy to collect monies due from consumer debtors. Um, and that's resulted in the municipality not being able to pay um, creditors on time and a continuous, a continuous decline in terms of the municipality's cash reserves. Um, and then leaving the municipality in a situation where it is uh, very vulnerable, vulnerable uh, financially. What we also emphasized on the audit report, Chairperson, is um, the debt impairment um, that has been recognized by the municipality. And the municipality reported on it financial statements um, that for particular receivables, about 700 million is doubtful in terms of it being received uh, by um, the municipality from uh, consumers or uh, beneficiaries of those services that would have been provided at that stage. And also on consumer data, um, about more than 2 billion was also indicated as, as, uh, as doubtful. If you can go to the, back to the previous slide. 
And what we are highlighting here at Chapelsin is that if the municipality is properly implemented, um, the debt collection policy and credit control policy of the municipality, um, this situation would have will not have resulted uh, because debtors would have paid. And what we picked up in terms of the audit of debtors as well was that um, a significant part of the debtors book of the municipality um, is uh, comprised of deceased debtors, um, which uh, the municipality had not taken any steps to, um, to, 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 to collect those deceased debtors. Some of the monies um, owed by uh, those deceased debtors dated um, many years back, but the municipality had written off some and continued to provide services to those um, uh, deceased debtors. What is key here is for the municipality to be uh, active in terms of uh, or deliberate in terms of collecting uh, monies due to the municipality uh, for services provided to um, consumer debtors. Um, another one we highlighted is uh, significant losses on electricity and water. Um, what we are highlighting here is the municipality having incurred significant losses um, relating to electricity and water, which uh, speaks to hundreds uh, of millions uh, that have been incurred. Um, uh, mainly here, you find that um, it due to uh, illegal connections and aging infrastructure um, and some vandalism of infrastructure as disclosed by the municipality on the financial statements. However, our findings also picked up or revealed that it is a magnitude of um, consumers that are on prepaid uh, meters, which never buy electricity from the municipality, um, basically indicating that um, electricity could be leaking out of the municipality and not being paid for. What is important here for the municipality also is to implement the credit control policy which provides uh, for, for controls that the municipality should um, implement uh, to prevent uh, such losses continuing to be incurred by the municipality. Um, because basically the municipality is buying electricity and then um, letting it go without getting any value from that uh, electricity. The last uh, point we emphasized as well was on the restatement of corresponding figures, which we have, um, uh, um, which we had emphasized on the financial statement to say, the financial statements in the prior year we, we, we had material misstatements, which were then corrected in this uh, year's financial statements. On the next slide, we uh, on this slide, we um, um, sort of um, provide further information in terms of the misstatements identified on the annual performance report. We audited one program, Chapelsin, which is basic service delivery. And on that program, for two indicators, we found that they were not well defined. As a result, we could not verify whether they are reliable in terms of the achievements reported on the annual performance report. Uh, the two indicators, uh, one related to access um, to, to, to a number of uh, households with access to free basic refuse collection service. Um, um, and uh, the other one uh, related to refuse or weekly refuse uh, removal uh, in terms of um, them soon losing, uh, collecting refuse from the household. Um, what, uh, uh, what, what, what we also found also, um, which is the last bullet point, um, and there were also other indicators that had misstatements on the annual report that we audited that were corrected. However, these two indicators, because um, of the severity of the misstatements that were identified on them, um, no corrections could be uh, were possible during the audit process to be made by management. On the next slide, we um, also provide better information on the non-compliance in CAT by um, the municipality or um, reported in the audit report of the municipality. Um, and the focus areas basically that were identified relates to the quality of the financial statements, um, the UAFW, revenue management, consequence management, and strategic and planning. 
if you look on the movements, you will see um, that um, the errors remained uh, stagnant or there was a regression to that effect. The DHS findings on this will be um, um, revealed on the next slide, uh, if we, we can move. On the focus area of financial statements, um, this one speaks to the financial statement that were, were, was were submitted for audit, uh, contained errors, and um, where those errors were corrected during the audit process. Therefore, the municipality did not comply with the MFMA in that regard. The second one on expenditure management uh, speaks to the UIFW um, not prevented. Uh, the amounts are stated for each of the three paragraphs uh, in terms of unauthorized expenditure assisting on 120 million uh, for 2021 um, and uh, irregular expenditure about 50 million. And we had fruitless and wasteful expenditure for 6.27 million. The last non non compliance reported there relates to um, the reasonable step not taken to ensure that the municipality implements and maintains an effective system of expenditure control, including procedures of approval, authorization, and payment of funds. Um, this one speaks to the findings that we would have picked up when we were auditing um, expenditure where the, the, if, uh, where the controls relating to expenditure did not um, prevent um, uh, payments that did not comply with the policies of the municipality. On the next slide, we touched briefly on revenue uh, management. Um, although the municipality received an unqualified audit opinion, um, there is certain levels of non-compliance that uh, was reported in terms of effective system um, to manage uh, data and revenue in the municipality, um, and also the system for managing uh, revenue and data uh, in the municipality. Some of these findings um, are related to material irregularities, which are also included on this report. On consequence management, um, there were instances noted where um, action was not taken against officials that were um, found to have um, um, committed financial mis misconduct uh, as a result of investigations done in the municipality. Strategic planning and performance management basically speaks to the lack of adequate systems uh, for the management of performance uh, information. Uh, this speaks to the uh, indicators that uh, were not well defined as uh, indicated above. On the next slide. From this slide, uh, Jefferson, we touched briefly on material irregularities notified um, to um, the accounting officer. Is it the audit report date? So these ones were reported on the audit report and um, they were reported in this fashion, as you see here on screen. The first one relates to revenue not built at a landfill site. Um, and this one speaks to a, a breakdown on the way bridge. Um, system in the landfill site, which uh, basically is a system that would have uh, assisted the municipality to be able to record the revenue of people coming into um, to the landfill site. Um, so the breakdown of it resulted in the municipality uh, not being able to recognize revenue appropriately and some losses were incurred. Um, we have assessed uh, the most part responded to us before the audit report date and we assessed and we concluded that um, the steps being taken or planned to be taken by the accounting officer were not appropriate. As a result, we then um, made recommendations to the accounting officer um, on the audit report to say um, the account of, accounting officer must take the following step. Um, the matter must be properly investigated to identify if there is any offense committed, um, and the financial loss should be quantified, uh, which is the loss of revenue. Um, disciplinary actions uh, where appropriate, including criminal proceedings, should take place against any official or any person that may be found uh, to have done something wrong in that regard. Um, and um, the last point here, 
uh, we are emphasizing that um, uh, if any person is found to have caused a loss, then such funds must be uh, recovered from that person. Um, what has happened after this um, uh, status chairperson, um, we did a follow up and we found that the recommendations um, that we had included in the audit report and set a deadline of the 29th of April, 2022 were not, uh, were not implemented. And then we went a step further of taking the remedial um, action in terms of those um, uh, recommendation not being implemented. Um, so the same recommendations as you see them here were then converted to the remedial actions required to be implemented, implemented by the uh, by the um, accounting officer, which basically means there are no longer recommendations, they are now binding. Uh, and at this stage, um, I think the um, current uh, accounting officer has responded or given us a status in terms of the um, uh, steps taken to address those remedial actions. And um, the ESA office, we are still assessing that on our side. On the next slide, we have another notified MI that was reported in the audit report, which was the failure to recover revenue from the sale of, of timber. Um, here we are highlighting that there's a sale uh, that had taken place where the municipality was disposing as timber. And, and um, however, the municipality did not collect the money's due uh, from that sale and that resulted in a material financial loss. Um, and we are highlighting the, the actions that um, the municipality responded to us and said um, he will take and uh, follow up on these actions has been done. Um, what we are doing now, um, we are assessing uh, the accounting officer's submissions in terms of what he has done so far in terms of uh, these actions. And that's assessment we have not uh, completed doing it. The next one we also reported on the audit report is salary payments made uh, to a manager who never reported for duty. Um, on this one, the municipality made payments to an employee that was not uh, coming through to, 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 to the work in the municipality and it resulted in a financial loss or a material financial loss to the municipality. And um, the, the actions that the accounting officer intended to do was a forensic investigation, which was done and completed um, uh, long ago, and also to start the recovery of the finances uh, of the funds from the applicable parties in terms of the forensic report. We have done a follow-up here as well. Um, however, the follow-up is in progress because we've got the submission of the progress made but we still need to engage ourselves and properly assess it to see if the accounting officer is still on the right trail. On the next slide, um, this one speaks to the uh, MI. Uh, I think Kopta touched briefly on this one to say um, uh, the MI relates to the poor management of the New England, England landfill site um, as a result of um, inadequate controls. A lack of competing um, and also fires that have been reported significantly in the media um, and also cases of poor management of the leachet um, management system um, as a result contaminating um, the water, the surrounding water resources and the environment. What happened here, we notified on this MI after the audit report um, date and after it had already been tabled to council, um, the accounting officer then responded um, within the set timelines um, for, for that MI. And we have done, um, or we are doing a, a follow up process in terms of those submissions that were made. Um, and we are nearing completion. However, the final conclusion has not yet been made in terms of whether the accounting officer is taking appropriate steps in relation to the management of the new England uh, landfill site. Um, that is the last confirmed MI from Sunduzi. And then on the next slide, 
Um, we touched briefly on other reports in terms of the investigation. This is the in, this is the state houses at the end of the audit last year, so I, I won't dwell much. I assume the municipality will be providing you up to date information specifically for investigations. On the next slide. Um, this is basically the summary um, in terms of what um, we believe would assist the municipality in terms of improving uh, the situation in the municipality. Um, Chairperson, we have highlighted that um, a sound system of internal controls and its effective governance structures need to be in place in the municipality for the municipality to go towards the right directions in terms of car outcomes and uh, service delivery. Um, and the next one, um, we are saying um, the application of preventative controls needs to be a daily thing in the municipality with management performing appropriate reviews, monitoring, and taking timely action where corrective measures are required. And um, on the side of the leadership of the municipality, the MM basically needs to promote a culture of accountability and consequence management. Uh, in order for the officials to um, to change um, uh, and, 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 do, and, and, and move to us doing the right thing. Because if we're not implementing consequence management, people will continue to do the incorrect things uh, if they know there's no consequences for their, for their wrong actions. Okay, and then on the um, uh, fourth bullet point, it's basically improving the financial um, uh, status of the municipality by making prudent financial management decisions, um, including implementing properly your um, credit control policy, um, proper management of your budget, making sure that it's monitored and properly uh, executed as part of that process. Um, and where consultants are utilized, it is vital that the quality of the underlying data uh, that is submitted um, uh, together with effective project management um, is monitored uh, for the area where the consultant is assisting uh, the municipality. That will assist the municipality from getting the value where they have actually used uh, consultants. I, I believe, Chairperson, this is the last slide of my presentation. I want to thank you for the opportunity to present to the committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we 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 are uh, now we we left out a provincial treasury, who were supposed to complete or complement what uh, Cocta presented. Can we now at this stage again call on the representative of uh, provincial treasury? Mr. Farad, uh, I think he will also introduce the others who are part of that. Provincial Treasury. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chairperson. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Uh, good yeah. morning to you. And maybe good morning maybe to you. the other suggestion is that uh, our program is so quiet, we can't see the presenters. Can we please see them? Over to you. Yes. Uh, am I visible? Yes, you are. Okay, good. Uh, once again, good morning, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members of the Committee and all protocols observed. Uh, my name is Farhad Kassanji from KZN Provincial Treasury. Uh, this morning, I'm on my own. Uh, the HOD is also unwell this morning. Uh, will someone be assisting in writing the presentation? Yes, please, write the presentation. Yes, we can see it now. Okay. Uh, 
chairperson, uh, the dashboard that's been provided here is to provide an overview of the financial viability of Fonsinduzi municipality. It is based on the uh, historical trend over the last two audited financial years being the 1920 and 2021 financial year. But what we've also done is looked at the pre-audited 2021-22 financial statements. Now, there is a caveat here because we all are aware that during the audit cycle, there's always material adjustments to the financial statements. And that is why I'm throwing in the caveat that the 2021-22 data is based on the pre-audited financial statements and certainly not on the audited financial statements. Chairperson, on the left-hand side is the financial viability where we look at the revenue and expenditure uh, for the 21-22 uh, financial year. And you will notice that the operating surplus or the operating deficit is sitting at 176 million. We've then removed the capital grants from that uh, uh, calculation to give you an operating deficit of 552 million. Now, this is an improvement from the prior year where the prior deficit was sitting at 902 million. So what this does is actually removes What is happening now? He is cut off. Indicator that we're looking at. We lost him. So yeah, I you lose the chair. So can I can I switch off my video because I think that's where I'm talking. Okay. No, that's fine. Uh, at least we have seen you. Okay. Uh, where did you lose me, chairperson? Uh, no, you can uh, start where you are. I'm sure. Net available cash. Document. Yes. So the net available cash, when we look at the net available cash, what we do here is we look at the cash and investments, less the unspent conditional grants, where the cash and You are also lost. Now. It's, it's not the video. Um... And when it looks at 1920, they were sitting at with a positive 336 million. It fell to 212 million in 2021. And looking at the pre audited AFS for 21 22, it's come down further to 192 million. So there seems to be a downward trajectory in terms of the net available cash. And obviously, this goes towards the payment of, of uh, it goes towards the liquidity of the municipality. But it also has a direct impact in that if one looks at the bottom right hand corner of the screen you'll see the creditors days that are sitting at 137 days now obviously that is of concern because uh, in terms of section 65 of the mfma creditors should be paid within 30 days of invoice so there is a correlation in that you can see that the municipality is struggling to have liquid cash and the knock-on effect you're seeing it through higher creditors uh, balances that might be reflected the second or the third indicator that we want to just uh, perhaps indicate is the uh, cash coverage ratio, which is sitting at 0 0,4. Now, the cash coverage ratio basically indicates uh, how long a municipality would be able to sustain itself should there be any abrupt or consequential or catastrophic event in the municipality. Now, the norm, again, as my colleague in Cocteau indicated earlier on, is sitting should be in the region of one to three months, and the municipality is sitting at 0 0,4 which is not uh, a good place to be. The current ratio is sitting at 1,03, which is not too bad. In terms of the sources of income, uh, Sanduzi's major revenue stream is coming from its service charges as well as its property rates. On its grant expenditure, on its grant dependency, it's very, very minutely dependent on grants to, to continue operation. In fact, it's only 12% of its total budget comprised of grants. The Auditor General, as well as COPTA, have indicated the electricity and uh, uh, water losses that, that are prevalent at the municipality. And you could see that year on year, there seems to be a steady increase in both the electricity, which is for the 21, 22 flagged in, uh, in blue, for both electricity and water. Chairperson, at the bottom left hand screen, of, uh, you will see that we have looked at the capital expenditure versus the budget. And what we'll notice when you look at the trend is that over the 1920, 2021, 
there seems to be, uh, the gap seems to be closing between what is budgeted for and what is actually spent, which is a positive sign uh, that the municipality is now starting to use its capital budget more effectively, but also it's starting to budget more effectively for capital expenditure. If one looks at the 2021, you can see the gap closing even further, which means that the municipality is now uh, spending pretty close to what it has originally budgeted for. Having said that, and having obviously mentioned that these are pre-audited figures, uh, when I, we look at the first quarterly performance uh, at the end of September of 2022, uh, there is a bit of concern that's, that's starting to emerge again on the capital expenditure where it could either be through incorrect reporting uh, or some other discrepancy with the financial system, but we're seeing a trend where the expenditure is, is way below what is anticipated, especially after the first quarter. The audit opinions is still awaited for the 21-22. The collection rate on bill revenue is sitting at about 85%, uh, which is pretty decent, but it's still not at the level that it should be, which is 95% and above. And when one looks at the total available balance, which is the total amount of debt that is available for collection, it's sitting at about 45%. Now, I think this is where the municipality is struggling and having difficulty in, in, in uh, collecting its historical debt. And I think when one looks at the debtors aging of the municipality, a lot of the debt is probably prescribed and that's where the difficulty is arising uh, with the municipality having challenges in trying to collect and recover that. You can see the net debtors day is sitting at 129 days as well, which is not in a favorable position. The next slide, basically, the next two slides is just an explanation of the dashboard. And Slide six is basically uh, giving you the audit opinions for the last three, uh, two years, as well as the, uh, the uh, descriptions of the items that have been identified and flagged by the Auditor General. Chairperson, uh, these have already been covered in quite extensively by the AG in the prior presentation. He's basically listing the material uncertainties, the impairment issue that the municipality had. The next slide covers the material losses. And I think what is important and significant here on the material losses, especially when one looks at the electricity and water, you will see that on the electricity side, the losses represent 22% of the electricity purchases, purchased rather, and on, electric, on water, it's representing 30% of the total water purchase, which is quite substantial. Strategic planning issues was also identified by the AG, so I will not go into those, as well as the, the uh, financial statements are not prepared in all material respects in terms of the MFMA. The AG covered the expenditure management, we covered the revenue management, and as well as the consequence management as well. And the internal controls was one of the issues that he raised and where he also made recommendations to the municipality. Uh, revenue not built at the landfill side in terms of the material irregularities, the salaries that were paid uh, to the official at the municipality, the failure to recover from the sale of timber, uh, were all issues that have been raised previously by the AG. Uh, Chairperson, in terms of the funding status of the municipality, the latest budget is funded. They had a bit of difficulty in 2021 where the adopted budget was unfunded, but that was subsequently corrected in the adjustment budget. In terms of their performance, and I'm sure my colleagues from National Safety will probably add further to this, uh, at the end of the first quarter, uh, the municipality was showing a surplus of 595 million in terms of the operating revenue and expenditure. Uh, but when one looks at the capital expenditure, and this was the concern I had when I, when I put the dashboard up, in that in the, in the prior year, the, dash, the, the, the gap between the actual expenditure and the budgeted expenditure seems to be closing. But when we go look at the capital expenditure for the first quarter, it's sitting at 7,2% which is quite concerning. Uh, either there is a discrepancy in the data, but uh, be that as it may, I'm sure the municipality will respond and attempt to uh, improving that. Using just a straight line percentage, that should be in the region of about 25%. But obviously there are explanations for, for the differences. Uh, Chairperson, uh, the issue around uh, the net available cash uh, I've mentioned in terms of where the municipality sat at the end of June. Uh, of significant to note also in the net available cash is that the note that I've put on the right hand side is that the total cash and equivalents of 321 million uh, also contains an amount of 32 million that is set aside for compensation for your COID. 
Having said that, even after one removes that, the municipality still has a positive net available cash position of 192 million. Uh, so from that perspective, although we've seen a decline, it's not uh, as significant as other municipalities that we've seen where the net available cash is going into a negative position. Chairperson, uh, the debtors at the end of uh, September is also quite substantial in terms of uh, the, when one looks at the aging. In the greater to 90 days category, you'll see the percentage sitting at about 83%. And this goes back to the, uh, to the dashboard that I put up in that the municipality obviously has a major uh, uh, effort or major effort needs to be put into collecting this historical debt that seems to be a problem. On the conditional grant side, at the end of uh, September, uh, the percentages of each of the grants are reflected on the table. On the FMG grant, there's expenditure of 13.1%. On the MIG grant, at 25.3%. And your WSIG, which is also a substantial grant, it's sitting at 17.1%. Uh, this slide basically explains the table, showing you where the low expenditure has occurred. And uh, Chairperson, that is uh, the summary for Sindhuzi. Thank you very much. Um, we now we move now to uh, DCOC. Can we ask uh, uh, Mr. Paul Mohale, who's acting DDG for DCOC, and Mr. Alan Zimba? This is your opportunity. If there are any issues you'd want to draw the attention of the committee to, in relation to Msunduzi. Over to you. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, my name is Noloazi Jokweni. I will make the presentation on behalf of uh, my acting TTG, uh, Mr. Mpo Mohale. Okay. Chairperson, uh, I will not uh, go into detail in terms of my presentation uh, as we align ourselves with the presentation that was made by the province. But what I'll do, I will just go straight to slide uh, number eight, where I will be presenting our specific support that we provide to uh, Umsunduzi. Yes, that slide. Uh, the support by the department we were saying uh, our minister, together with the Minister of Higher Education, uh, Dr. Blade Zimande, are championing the program uh, focusing on alignment of cooperative based community economic development model to the, uh, to, to the DDM to address service delivery challenges. So Msunduzi is, the, is one of the KwaZulu Natal municipalities that are, are, are included. Uh, in this uh, program, focusing on national uh, uh, program uh, on routine uh, on routine uh, road maintenance and pothole patching. The objective of the program is to uh, mainstream a cooperative-based community economic development model as a critical catalyst uh, catalyst in the implementation of DDA. We also implement the, the cooperative uh, based community economic development model as required uh, training and cooperative development interventions to address service delivery challenges. And then we'll be facilitating a developmental exit strategy of CWP and EPWP beneficiaries from the program and also position intention as a training program to access funding in CITAS uh, thereby helping municipalities with limited financial resources. We'll also focus on service delivery challenges in the municipalities, uh, develop a funding model which enable different government departments and entities to complement each other, reduce silo mentality and avoid duplication of service delivery resources to maximize uh, results. So this program is a, co is a collaborative effort by DCOC, uh, KZN Cocta, uh, EDTIA, and Umsundu's local municipality. Can we move to the next slide? <clears throat> so, Misa, uh, 
also support the municipality on solid uh, waste management. We are saying there's uh, this uh, innovative solid waste management uh, mechanism, uh, which is incorporating local economic stimulation and job creation as part of the presidential employment stimulus. Uh, so this, uh, the primary objective of the program is to promote and ensure effective and efficient delivery of waste management services whilst also improving livelihoods in communities. So, so far the beneficiaries, uh, the beneficiaries appointed over the three months uh, project are as follows. For January, 2022, we had uh, 1,033, February, 1,143, and March is uh, 1,040. So the, 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 this community-based, uh, it's, it's more of a clean-up campaign, the peer educator training, the two bin bag system and separation uh, at source, the waste collection and transportation transfer and disposal, community awareness in initiatives, promotional activities for sustainable waste management, provision and implementation of innovative technology and alternative methods to avoid, reduce, recycle, and uh, reduce waste, including landfill management. We pilot waste recycling initiatives, the enterprise development to 30 beneficiaries in this municipality, establish strategic partnerships and the five um, bulk waste containers to uh, complement and the uh, standard of services and prevent illegal dumping of waste uh, were donated to the Sundos local municipality. Then there's also a viability and the validation of waste for service delivery program that a uh, uh, MISA together with a uh, uh, the Department of Social of Science uh, Innovations and the Technology Innovation uh, Agents that uh, they are partnering and they're in the process of initial, initializing viability and validation of the innovation for service delivery. So it's more of a waste uh, innovation. So we're saying Sundos is one of those municipalities. So the activity, uh, the activities of this uh, program uh, components entail selecting and supporting the small number of pilot projects that will serve to demonstrate the systematic viability innovations and uh, also promoting the realization of social economic rights for all in particular women and vulnerable groups so in so doing will enhance the ability of municipality to integrate innovative technology solutions in delivery system, gather evidence through these uh, pilot demonstration projects and contribute towards improve, improved decision-making by municipality. And uh, lastly, address systematic requirements for adoption of demonstrated technologies. So there's also uh, what you call this in, this innovative technology solution for basic services uh, delivery, which is aimed to demonstrate the appropriate innovative technology solutions for improving access quality of basic services. For example, water <clears throat> resources management, waste management, green and renewable energy solutions, san sanitation and connectivity. So MISA, <clears throat> together with uh, TIA and DSI, have created a strategic collaboration, as we uh, said earlier, by integrating these uh, sustainable programs into unified innovative waste management program known as Sustainable uh, Innovative Waste Management. <clears throat> MISA will serve as implementing entity for the program's uh, pilot carried out over two years. The initiative will deploy will uh, be deployed as a pilot to use insight and data uh, obtained to improve municipal evidence-based decision process. So the pilot projects are designed to examine how these technologies and innovations are access made available and acceptable and how will they fit into basic services 
and municipal operations, including waste management. So the aim, uh, the main objective is to encourage uh, towns to adopt innovations and scale up successful ideas to enhance everyone's uh, socioeconomic status, especially women and vulnerable. Uh, okay, uh, the, the next uh, slide. So we also as a MISA support on labor intensive construction. So the program management support and capacity building towards institutionalization of uh, labor intensive uh, construction. Uh, so the, the, these are the objectives of, of this uh, LIC is to provide strategies assist and assistance for municipalities to realize labor intensive construction methods within existing grant funding. Also improve the skills of unskilled labor through project-based training, then contribute towards maintenance of municipal infrastructure for improved service delivery. And uh, lastly, contribute towards alleviation of unemployment while delivering basic services. So uh, these are achievements uh, so far. The Sundu's local municipal uh, technical staff have been trained on the program and there uh, is a NQF uh, level seven and five. There were workshops on EPWP and data process uh, flow undertaken, the review of project designs uh, to the program uh, compliant and also data capturing and EPWP reporting system improvement undertaken. So, uh, there are 33 official uh, to be taken through recognition of prior learning program uh, for this financial year. Two technical officials have been trained in technical courses uh, this year, uh, the, for, for this current financial year. Two young graduates uh, have been deployed uh, to support Musundu, the local uh, municipality. Uh, the, it's a civil engineer and also the town planning here uh, graduate. So MISA also has supported uh, the municipality for a period over six months by seconding a full-time professional registered energy specialist. And also MISA, uh, uh, the KZN-based professional engineer continues uh, providing hands-on support while energy specialist continues uh, to support the uh, head office from 2021 to date to ensure continuity. And then in terms of the MISA support by the energy uh, specialist, we're saying uh, during this uh, financial uh, year, the renewed uh, standalone electricity department structure, which is now complete and ready for implementation, and they reviewed uh, the operations and maintenance strategy. And so far, the energy specialist has conducted a study to convert municipal building into a green energy by implementing a rooftop PV solar system. So this study consistent to estimated energy and cost required to convert supply of major municipal building. So this strategy should assist the municipality with a green energy strategy in the long term whilst reducing the dependence. And also the energy specialist has in, uh, worked with the municipality uh, and, and engage ESCOM on behalf of the municipality on operations and maintenance and network planning issues. The operating and maintenance and portion uh, is being implemented and some substations have already undergone maintenance through collaboration with ESCOM. And also the energy specialist has initiated the review of existing network development plans, which should be undertaken by ESCOM. So uh, that's uh, the support that uh, we provided as the department together with MISA to the municipality. So we are just uh, saying that in terms of recommendation is for the portfolio committee to note the state, uh, the, 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 the state of the municipality and also the intervention that uh, the department is providing to the municipality. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, we, I hope uh, members are noting, as well as the municipalities who are supposed to be beneficiaries 
of the support that is given by either national departments as well as provincial departments and uh, where there are gaps where they need to do anything now the last from those who are providing support would be salka represented by mayor p ngubani who is also a case at N ncop rep uh, over to you mayor Mayor Ping one or any other person. Yes, honorable chairperson. Yes, the thank honorable, you. Honorable members and departments, Kokta, national and, and provincial, uh, the AG representatives that are there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here as stated on behalf of Salka KZN to give the engagement uh, assistance that was done by the Salka Provincial. The issues of, uh, um, 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 my also greet the, my colleagues from Usunduzi and Nkundjovu, this municipality. Um, the issues has been raised and highlighted by the department here earlier on with regard to the issues that, that are challenges that Musunduze are listed as cash flow management, payment of creditors, debt collection, billing, water and electricity meter reading, bulk meter, salary payments to unverifiable employees, and human resource capacity. The Salga KZN received a request from COCTA to deploy senior official to join the KZN provincial task team in providing hands on support to the distressed Munsundus local municipality and Salga KZN PC seconded uh, to deploy Mr. Tombela to join the KZN provincial task team in providing the requested support to Munsundus municipality. The issues which were highlighted were also having challenges also with regard to waste management, billing system, electricity provision, provision of water, landscaping, municipal parks and gardens, and budget preparations. Salga support went as follows. On leadership through the councillor induction program, the capacity building of councillors, on strengthening financial and general oversight of councillors was conducted. The second one was impact, in fact, MPEC strategy planning, strategic planning support on annual work plan development and development of oversight report of annual report. and convening of a work session with the Musunduzi local municipality administration led by provincial co-opter. The improvement of policy grasping and effective cooperative governance was also identified and policy compliance towards effective municipal governance and proof service delivery was also dealt with then Salka on industrial capacity also did the Salka job evaluation framework, which was going to address the job description were not established for all posts in which appointments were made in Musunduzi. So appropriate systems and procedures to monitor, measure, and evaluate the performance of staff were not developed and adopted. Those were the issues that were identified. On the hands-on recommendation was done to support the MM to investigate the four cases of employees who have been absent without leave and cannot be accounted for by the respective business units. The CFO to investigate the 11 cases of former employees 
who have been who have remained on the payroll for long periods of time despite their contracts or employment agreements having been terminated or come to an end. In addition, the CFO to remove the one employee who is on the payroll but is employed by the Ngundo district municipality, it has already been established that there was no payment made to this person anyway. The MM to investigate the case of one employee who passed away in July 2020, but continued to receive a salary until this was terminated in January 2021 as a result of the head count. It is a given that all who are found to have been neglected should be made to account, including paying back the money. General managers and supervisors or supervisors should have made time to randomly and regularly review attendance registers to confirm the non-attendance of the employees in order to identify sufficiently early employees who are on this problem and to facilitate formal exits where applicable, even if it is, it is resignation or death. On the areas where the challenges are found to date, they are found on the human resource capacity, the cash flow management, the bulk meter, then on the award for credit control, Salka, in fact, Msudus wins uh, that award. Salka invited Msudus to attend and receive the association's KZN award on 20. 22nd, for outstanding performance in credit control, Operation Coca Ama Million. Those are the issues that one we to highlight on uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, I thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we're now coming to the, what I call those who are primarily responsible to uh, um, to to deliver services to communities. Uh, we are now with the district municipality. Can I ask uh, uh, Councillor Zuma, who is the executive uh, mayor of Umkungunlo Wood District Municipality? Uh, over to you. Uh, District Mayor. What is happening now? Uh, of course, if the district municipality is not available, we will definitely move to Umzinyati that we are about here. Can the Sorry, Chief yeah. Person. Sorry, yeah. Chief Person. The, the, the person from the district is speaking, but we can't hear anything. There's no sound coming from that person and the microphone is on from the side. And then what do we do? Can we then we'll come back to him uh, for now, switch him off and, uh, and then communicate with him. And then we move to Msunduzi local municipality. Councillor Mzimkulu Tebola, executive mayor, uh, accompanied by the deputy executive mayor. And uh, I have seen as well that the 
MPEG chairperson, as well as the uh, Mr. Mapoloba, city manager, and Mrs. Nelly Sizwenyo, CFO. Can I hand over to your executive mayor? Uh, thank you very much, uh, honorable chairperson. Uh, greetings to yourself, to members of the portfolio committee, uh, colleagues from various municipalities that are present here. We also do have honorable our council whip, Councillor Sandile Zamini, <clears throat> with us here. Uh, greetings to all the officials. Honorable Chair, we do have a presentation that we have prepared, but to save your time, I would think most of what Kokta has presented is similar to our presentation. Uh, of course, if needs be also, or we also have the ministerial representative, I just see his name here, if needs be, we can flight our presentation, take you through, but as I'm saying, most of what Kokta has presented is the status quo of our municipality currently, safe to say, Chair, uh, because this might come up maybe from the members as a question. Uh, we voluntarily approach National Treasury sometime in February this year, seeking assistance to review our financial recovery plan, because that plan had been adopted somewhere in 2018, noting the developments in Sunduzi currently. We felt that it needs to be reviewed so that it can also be in line with, with what is happening now, of which we are working closely with National Treasury. We have identified pillars that need to be attended to, which uh, regularly council does get reports on how far are we to assess the situation and make some changes where it needs to be. But I'm, I, I'm raising this because I did not see it on that uh, presentation chair. Uh, that, that's the only area that I think uh, might need to be highlighted. Of course, it is our commitment and our and our vision that we, we, we achieve for this financial year due to the issues that uh, the AG has raised now, we, 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 we don't want to regress. We believe the unqualified audit opinion is the way to go. We make a commitment to every council meeting and expo and take council on board on how far are we in our vision to, of achieving a clean audit as a commitment to saying we want to account, but we don't just want to account, but that must also be measured in terms of the service delivery that we want to give to our people. Uh, we know we do have challenges. In the main, our financial viability will have seen, whilst there's that slight improvement of now 1.4 or one month plus, we, we are not yet where we would want to be. But we are proud to say, uh, during the first quarter of this financial year, we believe we have been collecting anything between 90 to 110 percent. Hence, Salga is recognizing us tomorrow uh, for the implementation of our co credit control policy. To us, that will assist us in two ways, Chair. One, to deal with the issue of our data age analysis, which is not really very good. Uh, sitting at 5.5 billion is it's too much. Whilst we still need to cleanse our data, but we, 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 we are targeting at least to have collected, if not 3 billion, at least 2 billion uh, during this financial year. It will be difficult, but the, what, what we have started doing through that Operation Coca 
Poppy Mali is making a significant change. I'm just highlighting that, Chair, but also, we also know that with that, we will be able to deal with the issue of our creditors. We, we, we know and understand that it is unacceptable that we can be sitting with creditors that are over 120 days while, when, when we are supposed to be only within uh, 30 days. So we understand that and we want to deal with that one. But also we know coupled with that, we'll be in a position to run on our own as a municipality without really uh, standing on <coughs> the provincial cocktail. Of course, the provincial government, government needs to come and assist us, but let it be on section, uh, is it 154 rather than 139? Because we believe being a secondary city, we should be able to run on, to stand on our own. Like that report said, the MEC has given us some 13, if not 14 issues that we need to deal with, which I believe, and we believe here in Sunduz that we are now dealing with those issues. Uh, most of them were listed on the COCTAS report, which like I said, if the chairperson allows us, we can table that report, but the reality is you'll find that 90% is what has been reported also by DCOC. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I think, Chair, uh, that's all we can say. We will, of course, be ready to take questions because I believe most of the questions that might come, it will be us who will be better place to respond to. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I was uh, still uh, grappling with that. Uh, I'm sure members have been listening. They did receive the documents, uh, but maybe because of your comments, uh, we indicated that National Treasury was also present in the meeting. Uh, we have got Nokwanda Mahori, we have got Homoto Baloi and Kavita Ruplan who are in attendance. They also send some documents uh, to say if there's a need, maybe let me allow them just to, so that they can corroborate what you were saying, uh, to say something in terms of the little input that they prepared. Over to you, National Treasury. I see a hand, uh, uh, Honorable Kiz. Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, my name is Mpoli Simkize the Deputy Mayor of Umsunduzi Municipality. I okay. just wanted to, to, to make one addition of which I believe that Cocktam has left out. Uh, it's in relation to the filling of critical vacancies. Um, <clears throat> we have concluded the, with the process of the appointment of the General Manager Electricity. We are still waiting for Cocta. Uh, to give us concurrency. So the matter is still remaining with them. I think it will be proper of us to also report uh, to this portfolio. So therefore, uh, this must be on record to say that we have progressed in terms of uh, the filling of critical uh, vacancies. Uh, when it comes to the general manager technical services, we have concluded with um, uh, the interviews. So the matter will be reported uh, on the next uh, council, then it will be then taken to COCTA for concurrence. That's a progress that I wanted uh, to report in terms of the feeling of uh, the critical vacancies, because I think that's an only part that has been left out that has not been reported uh, about. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Okay, thank you. Uh, Barry, are you... Uh, uh, prepared to just uh, important points you you have um good morning uh, to the chairperson members of the portfolio committee and and everyone else present 
My name is Kavita Ruplal. I'm from the National Treasury and I'm from the unit that is responsible for municipal finance recovery services. And our job at the Treasury is primarily to assist municipalities with the preparation of financial recovery plans. Just to, to um, you know, concur with uh, a lot of The municipality has approached the National Treasury um, to assist uh, them in revising a financial recovery plan, which they already had in place in 2017. We lost him. Honorable Mpumza is still trying to talk. Can we allow her? Chairperson, okay, can, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. All right. So we are now in the process of revising that financial recovery plan for the municipality. They have approached us. They have acknowledged, um, you know, the issues with their finances and the fact that they need help. And we have agreed to assist them in that process. So we undertook a detailed status quo assessment, um, which the findings of which concur largely with what has been presented by uh, COCTA and, uh, you know, the Treasury. We also looked at other issues in more detail with regard to the institutional setup, uh, you know, their governance processes. And we have, at the moment, a draft financial recovery plan which we will be presenting to the Municipal Council uh, this coming Monday. Uh, actually, not just presenting, we're workshopping the plan with the Mzunduzi Municipal Council on Monday, on the 7th of November. And once we've done that and we've received the input from, from the council, we will be prepared or, or moved by council and then the municipality can commence with its implementation. Uh, with effect from either December or January um, 2023. So chairperson from the Financial Recovery Services Unit and from the National Treasury in terms of the assistance we're providing, that is basically what we are doing um, with the municipality at the moment. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable members, I could see that you are now tired of listening and uh, there might be areas where we, we might have wanted this or that, but I'm sure out of the questions that you would be raising, uh, they will be able to respond. I'm now with yourselves. I saw the end of uh, Honorable Brink earlier, but when I wanted to, because we also wanted to check because of these many presentations, if there are any uh, issues members would have loved to raise. So Honorable Brink, you are number one. Any other hand? This is the opportunity now for members. Honorable Simon, we are number two. Honorable Thais are number three. Honorable Booms are number four. For now, it looks like those are the only hands. Uh, oh, the last one is uh, Honorable Uteles, number five. Uh, can we start, Honorable Brink? Good morning, Chairperson. Please permit me to leave my camera off as I'm on a very uh, weak internet connection here. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we, we are allowed. Uh, Jefferson, I recently visited Msunduzi uh, and spoke to community members and councillors there in the sense of frustration about the power outages and the problems with water and the degrading of basic services, uh, traffic lights, roads, is, is really uh, at an intense level. And what makes it more tragic is the fact that this is the capital city of uh, KwaZulu-Natal, at least where the most of the provincial government is seated. And so the feeling is, 
if this is the state of of the capital what chance does the rest of the province have especially in regards to support from other spheres of government which i think is a key issue in this respect then the representative of Musunduzi said at this meeting, chairperson, that a secondary city such as Musunduzi should be able to stand on its own feet. And he made this as a statement, and I agree with that. It should, but it's not standing on its own feet. In fact, the presentations delivered here today do not show that the intervention that was here, which seems to be not a uh, it, not a, a, a section 135 sub 5, I'm sorry, 139 sub 5 of the constitution. It's not a compulsory intervention. It was a voluntary intervention, it seems, with a, a section 139 um, 1B by the province. So what the success of this intervention depended on was largely the willingness of the municipality to implement the recovery plan and to take the measures needed to fix the infrastructure and to improve the revenue collection and so on. But even if you look at the more optimistic, unaudited financials presented by the province, and here we've got to be very careful to make any determinations on unaudited financials, even with that rosier picture, it's still very depressing to the extent that um, Sunduzi is still in financial distress, uh, and the cost coverage ratio is still under a month. So even though revenue collection has apparently improved to 85%, which I, you know, I doubt, given the fact that the cost coverage ratio has not improved uh, in, in tandem with the supposed improvement in revenue collection, Things really does, doesn't seem to have moved, except for perhaps in the two years, there's been an improvement on audit outcome and there now is a funded budget. But revenue collection is still poor, cash coverage is poor, um, money is not being spent on the capital budget despite all of these serious infrastructure issues, power cuts, water issues, money is not being spent. So there is something terribly wrong in Sunduzi, and even though it should be standing on its own feet, it isn't. Uh, and it, it would have been good to hear a clearer idea from National Treasury whether compulsory intervention should not be happening in this municipality, given um, what seems to be on a reasonable reading of these presentations, a very little improvement. Uh, in terms of, of voluntary intervention. And in, even in some instances, it seems an unwillingness by the council and the executive to play its part to make sure that the finances are spent in a way that would see the community benefit infrastructure and services improve and so on. So my question is to provincial and national treasury, uh, should we not be considering a section 139 sub 5 intervention in Sunduzi? In other words, a compulsory intervention, one that does not rely on the uh, grace and favor of uh, uh, the executive and the municipal council. And my question to Sunduzi would be how would you possibly justify the withdrawal of intervention? in the absence of any clear sign that things are improving in your municipality. What explanation do you provide to those residents that are so frustrated by the intermittent water and power outages and the financial deterioration of the municipality, even as they continue to pay for their services? Thanks very much, Chairperson. Well, Honorable Msumango. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, greetings to your good self. Uh, greetings to the portfolio committee members, the colleagues. And uh, greetings to the, the mayors that have uh, done the presentations and the officials and, of course, the support staff. Uh, Chair, 
Can I also request that I, I switch off my camera due to the poor network that I am experiencing in this corner of, 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 of the world? Okay. Um, the, 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 there is one thing Chad, that I, I, I think out of all the presentations stands out for me is that when you look at in particular Msunduzi, um, um, the municipality has been hopping from uh, section 1391B uh, from one uh, term it will expire to another term it expires. Yet nothing is coming all right um, out of all this intervention, including what DCOC has presented as additional uh, 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 support um, uh, 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 um, uh, strategies that they've placed in, in order to make sure that they assist the municipality. Maybe before we get to what Honorable uh, uh, Brink is, is saying, because, because I think that is where we're heading, looking at how things are currently happening. Maybe to the municipality of Msunduz, I want to ask a direct question to them. Um, is that, what is it, colleagues, that you think we need to do in order for you to be able to come, up of, to come out of this quagmire? Because the reality is the fact that you find yourself in this in this in this uh, uh, section one three nine one B, and you hoping you hoping from one term to another they, it expires up until uh, you you are now you now find yourself in where you are, and it, it clearly says was it effectively means then the people that are on the ground are deprived of the services that they are supposed to get. And for me, that is the, the, the worrying factor because you're moving from uh, one term to another with the same uh, a, a problem without any, 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 any improvement, even after there has been so much that has been put in place in order for you to be able to, 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 to try and improve. And yet we're not getting anything out of that. So I'm asking uh, uh, that question. The second one Chair, that I want, to, I want to move to is the issue of, um, is the issue of, um, um, uh, sorry about that, uh, is the issue that uh, when, you, when you listen to, to the AG presentation, it makes one reference under material uh, irregular, uh, uh, irregularities. It makes one uh, a reference uh, of an employee that did not uh, report for duty from the 1st of December, 2016, up until the 31st of July, 2019. I want to check if the municipality managed to try and recover uh, money in a form of a salary that was paid to this person that did not report for duty. Because the reality is that person uh, got paid wrongfully so, and uh, he got paid or she got paid out of the money that um, uh, is taxpayer's money. And that money is was not supposed to be paid to, to, to that uh, particular uh, individual. But over and above that is that what is interesting is that there is not even one person that is held accountable for this matter because you can't pay somebody that did not show up uh, 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 for, 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 for duty. Because then what it effectively means to me, it means there are no systems in place within the municipality that are able to detect that this person had worked for 10 days and therefore they qualify for this particular amount of money. So surely there must be some post that is held accountable. If for, I'll make an example. If for instance, I report to Mr. Kasa as my senior, Mr. Kasa must be able to account as to say, how was I paid when I did not report for truth for more than 12 months? And, and this time is more than 12 months, because if you, if you count from the 1st of December 2016 up until 2019, it tells you that then we, we, we have a problem. So, so for me, it, it, it says 
we might have picked this one up only. The issue would be how many of such cases are happening in the municipality and we are unable to pick them up uh, as, 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 as this one. And I'm raising it because of when you look at, at, at uh, when you listen to the presentation that was done by the AG uh, um, uh, representative from the province, it makes reference of, 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 of that. And, 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 and we must be able to find a way of making sure that uh, we, 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 we get answers uh, when it comes to that. Chair, the last matter that um, I, 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 I want to raise, um, uh, in, fa in fact, let me, let, let me stop here, then I'll come back uh, maybe when you, when you are able to give us an opportunity during the second round. Thank you. Honorable Teresa. No, thanks, Chair. Uh, uh, look, I will be very brief because the questions that I, I, I was going to ask pertaining to service delivery have been covered by my two colleagues uh, who spoke before me. Um, I should think that, I was hoping that this municipality has much more um, capacity to collect and to raise uh, their own revenue and to have their uh, 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 economic activities in place uh, in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, services are, are, are brought to people. Uh, but it's not the case. Uh, just the question that I wanted to ask uh, on top of what it has been asked here. The, the last speaker from Umsundus spoke, uh, proposed uh, section 154, that it should be now 154 of the constitution uh, in terms of the interventions. And then I, I, I wondered, on top of my head, same time, I, I, I there, there was a, a question that if these other inter interventions had not worked with them, what should uh, what should be what what guarantee that this proposed one fifty four uh, will work? Because it does not seem that there is a leadership that uh, that is quite uh, akin to allow. Uh, administration to bring about positive results people are crying people are uh, are not are not getting services from from the municipality and and if we have those those issues amongst uh, the administration and the and the of the municipality and the political leadership uh, the, the people are not going to be able to to get those anytime soon Unless, of course, uh, uh, we 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 have other uh, 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 prompting motivation to 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 do that and commitment from. I think that we should chair, get a commitment and off time frames into what has been reported uh, to be to be failures of this municipality. We should get a commitment that. Uh, uh, during this time, we would have, for instance, uh, the last speaker spoke about the five million uh, of, of 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 collection, and he, he he spoke to the three million that should be collected and creditors over uh, one twenty days, whereas it should it, it it's supposed to be thirty days, and uh, he we we would like to hear how he will he will do that having having had uh, 120 days already uh, being wasted but chair it is the section 32 of the of the constitution of the mfma that requires the accounting officers to promptly inform the mayor amongst others uh, in writing or of a any unauthorized irregular or fruitless and wasteful expenditure incurred by means by the municipality whether any person is responsible or under investigation for such unauthorized irregular fruitless and wasteful expenditure uh, to what what is the nature of the consequences uh, implemented against those who were found to have been uh, responsible for incurring 
of the UIFW expenditure. Uh, that's that's my question there. And then I didn't hear anything about Ms. Unduzi, uh, salary salary bill check because I would have loved to 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 do oversight on on their salary bill uh, and check in in light of the fact that there are people that have been paid uh, that have passed away and to some um, and amongst others uh, the people that have that have not been part of the municipality for a very long time so I would have loved to 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 check it against their salary bill chair and uh, can they just uh, uh, explicate as to what is the situation in terms of their salary bill and um, I think that would uh, that would be my my questions for now chef thanks thank you honorable Bumza. <laughs> Honorable uh, Thanks, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, can I also be allowed uh, not to open up my uh, video camera? Yes, allowed. Uh, thanks, Chair, and uh, let's welcome the presentation from all the municipality, the province, uh, national, uh, both. Uh, uh, Cocta and Treasury. Mine says that uh, in our last uh, PAC meeting with Musunduzi municipality in their last appearance before the portfolio committee, a concern was raised about the large amounts of money spent on security. Uh, could uh, the municipality uh, please uh, appreciate and uh, inform us where that the 80 million spent on security has been recovered by now. Again, share the, the AG raises concern on the lack or the weak of accountability and consequence management. And by implication, therefore, it meant that uh, governance and uh, oversight by the leadership um, has been weak or has been absent. Um, does the mayor and his executive and the MM in a position to assure us as this committee that, that this weakness that has been raised by the Auditor General, which marked that uh, the municipality is in the position it is in now as a result of the lack of acting leadership and oversight by the leadership of the municipality. Is the mayor in a position to tell us now as this portfolio committee that uh, Soon, those municipality uh, is now having an active leadership that appreciates strategic function and provision of thought leadership and governance, so that the municipality might be in a position uh, in its turn around plan to move with speed to recover and indeed to regain its status of being an immediate uh, secondary city. Again, she, this municipality was placed under administration in 2019. Some other colleagues had indicated earlier on that on many times the municipality has been under administration. And uh, in the report that is presented by Cocta in the province, is that uh, the municipality now is in position as well as concurred by treasury through the assistance with the financial recovery plan that the municipality now is actually recovering and uh, there is a progress now. Can we be sure that uh, 
if they have addressed now the triggers of putting this municipality under administration, why is it now if there is a progress? Why is the municipality still under administration? Honorable Mbumza, are you still there? Uh, it looks like he is having a problem. Can we then move to Honorable Mbumza? Uh, Check. Yes, let's move to Honorable Butelis. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, could I be also be allowed to leave my camera off due to, to uh, an unstable connection? Okay, no, allow thank, it. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, this question is for Umsunduzi. Um, considering the municipality's incapacities relating to the provision of electricity and water due to their aging infrastructure, what is the reason for the significant capital under expenditure? then of 7.2% instead of the expected 25% at the end of the first quarter of 2022-2023 20, 20, uh, financial year. Uh, so could they please provide a brief summary of the consequence management measures that have been implemented for the municipal staff or officials that were found guilty of misconduct? How effective have those consequence uh, management, um, sorry, measures rather, how effective have they proven to be? Uh, regarding the 37 ward committees that are regarded as, as, as non-functional due to their non-submission of meeting evidence, what has been done regarding that issue of those 37 ward committees that are non-functional? And what measures have they put in place to ensure the report back uh, from the ward committees? The last question to, uh, is for Mpungunjo Wood District. Um, what provisions are in place to capacitate the fire safety and prevention unit? And how will they budget and how will their budget be adjusted to account for these provisions? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Umza. Are you still there? I still see your hand. Um, then if th that is uh, the picture as it is, uh, I think the members have uh, asked their questions and generally most of them, they are directed at the municipality in Sunduzi. Uh, I'm sure the rest of the other members will follow after that. Can we ask the mayor? I'm also having thunderstorms here. Can we ask the mayor to and the team to respond to the questions as raised? Uh, th th thanks, uh, of course, other members of the executive committee and officials will come in, but, but, but let me just uh, deal with few of the questions. Chair, we acknowledge the aged infrastructure of Msunduzi. We also are the ones who, the last time we were with the committee, reported on the progress we are making in terms of the implementation of our network development plan in terms of electricity, which is what we are still busy dealing with currently. But I can assure you, Chair, in terms of those electricity outages, it's not like it was yesterday. That is why the provincial government recognizes that there is an improvement in Sundos. And that also goes with the issues of water services. This current financial year, 
60% of our budget has been directed to infrastructure services. That includes electricity, that includes water, and our road network in the main. And I, I can assure you, Chairperson, I heard the issue of potholes in the city. Yes, there's still a backlog. But we are able to account how far have we gone in dealing with the issues of potholes and road resurfacing because most of our roads have now reached their lifespan because we care about the citizens of Msunduzi. We are busy implementing our electrification plan, our network development plan as it is chair. Of course, of course, we are the ones who still agree that we do have financial challenges. Hence, we voluntarily approached the National Treasury to say, we want to review our finance, financial recovery plan, come help us and also help us implement that reviewed plan. We voluntarily did that, Chair. We did that knowing and noting the fact that we are under section 139.1p which in terms of the extent, the last extension that was made was to say it is in place until the end of October, 2022. But in September, during our engagement with the MEC, the Honorable Zigalana, few challenges were highlighted. Hence the report of Cocta says, we were given three months to attend to some of those matters that were raised, which were still red flags. And we can assure this committee and the people of the Republic, of course, especially those of Umsunduzi, that those matters are being dealt with. Consequence management. I think, Chair, one mistake that one made, I was try to be mindful of the time, of course, was just to confirm the report of COCTA because maybe had we taken you through our 43 slide presentation, some of the questions would have been responded to. But again, in that COCTA report, it goes to all issues of, to all issues of uh, consequence management. What have we done? What have been resolved? what is still outstanding and the reasons why we are, those, those are still outstanding. Uh, when it comes to the employee that was paid for 12 months or so without coming to work, that employee is being served with summons now because our intention is to recover. Uh, on behalf of the municipality and the people of this municipality. Of course, we believe, as I said, we believe, Honorable Chairperson, that we are at a stage where we can get out of Section 139.1b. Yes, of course, we know there's always been calls from other benches of section 139C, which talks to the municipality being dissolved, but we are saying there is improvement. So in, it is our view that there's no need for that. But of course, we also do understand that at times we play politics and we will, yeah. But to say we believe that 154, which talks to support given to municipalities by other spheres of government. We are saying that because it is an obligation of the other spheres of government to provide support to local government. And that is a normal support that when we approach National Treasury, we knew in terms of the MFMA, but also in terms of that section of the constitution, uh, 
other spheres of government need to come in. So in other words, I, I believe section 154 is not an intervention, but is the support given to municipalities because at the end of the day, South Africa is one country with a unitary government, which says then there's one government. It's just the, it's the spheres in terms of the powers and functions, but there's one government. The services that we are providing are services that the entire government should be providing to the people of this country. Chair, our report, which also Copta confirmed, is that all oversight structures are functional. Yes, when the intervention came into Msundozi, council meetings could not correlate, portfolio committees did not sit, but as it is now, all oversight structures of this municipality are functional. Two, of course, the other question I think it will be for, for, the, for the province to, 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 to respond to. But we believe with the measures we have put in place, of course, uh, the CFO or the municipal manager will need to come in on this one to talk to our spending on security. Because it's one area that we feel also that we must reduce spending on that. But as we do that, it be noted, despite of political killings in the province. So uh, we, we, we are saying we, we know whenever a councillor would approach the speaker for security, we understand the process that we must go through the issue of security and the threat assessment and all which takes forever from the SAPS. But at the end of the day, we also do not want to find ourselves in the wrong when it comes to that one. Therefore, we honestly uh, are doing all we can to reduce spending. I, I said, Chair, and a, a, a representative of Sanka KZN also said, the municipality tomorrow is being recognized for recognized by Sanka KZN for the implementation of the credit control policy. What does that mean, Chair? We have developed a program to recover and collect whatever that is due to the municipality. That is why. That is one of our success stories today. Because we decided to be very aggressive in that and implement our credit control policy, meaning that if we are able to sustain that, which we can assure the committee that it will be sustainable, this municipality will need support like any other municipality, but not under any intervention. Uh, that's the assurance we are giving, uh, also responding to the question that should we be moved out of administration? It is the way, <clears throat> it is the wish of this leadership, of this administration, and the commitment is shown, Chair. Because let 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 me assure you, Chairperson, through our interventions here. Uh, most of the service delivery challenges that this municipality has been facing are now changing, Chairperson, and that's the assurance we can give. It's a commitment from us, it's a commitment from this administration that the leadership and the administration in this municipality is here to serve the people of this city. And we are committed in doing that, Chairperson. Uh, of course, with your permission, I know that the Deputy Mayor will want to make additions. I also see one councillor, Strachan, but with your permission, Chair, if you can also allow Mr. Maponoba and uh, 
Ms. Lobo to respond to those administrative issues that we may have not dealt with. Thank you very much. Uh, you are allowed. Uh, uh, I, I think they might have noted your order. Can we follow that order? <laughs> Start with the deputy mayor. Or oh, anyone, let me not prescribe. Chair, can I come in? Uh, yes, please. Chair. Chair. Who is that now? One one of you must come in. Yes. This is Councillor Zamin check. Continue. Continue, Councillor Zamin. Uh, yes, uh, Chair. Just I've got a problem with the problem. Councillor Damin. Chair, sure, I think we've lost Councillor Lamini. This is Councillor yes. Ostrochen. Um, Can you continue? Exam yes. Thank you, uh, uh, Chair. Uh, this is Councillor Ostrochen, executive member as well as uh, leader of the official opposition in, in council. Um, just, just to, just to make some comments and obviously support some of the members of the portfolio's um, views. Obviously, we, we need to get views from around the political table. Um, and obviously, just to make sure that everyone's uh, on the same page, that we've been under administration since 2019. Uh, this is almost going into three and a half years where we've gone through three different administrators. Um, and obviously, I've been covered in terms of some of the comments in terms of the financial situation. But the most concerning is the fact that uh, and I remember that the NCOP did arrive uh, a couple months before we went under administration um, and, and mentioned the fact that the council was riddled with political interference. And that, that obviously hasn't changed due to the fact that we're still sitting with forensic investigations dating back to 2016. And I think they have partially been covered by some of the previous speakers, but it's just unacceptable that these investigations haven't been concluded, uh, many of which are of criminal nature, that these people have never seen any consequences for the amount of money and criminality that was involved in the collapse of this city. I do believe that uh, there has been a slight improvement, but very, very late in the day in terms of the, the, the amount of collapse that's happened around us. And we really have only started the administration and possibly making our way back uh, into financial recovery since um, maybe three or four months ago. So I do believe that uh, the municipality is way far gone in terms of the same people sitting around the same table trying to make those changes. I do believe that there needs to be further intervention and I will support the comments by uh, 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 MP um, Honorable Brink uh, that there needs to be a further intervention from National Treasury and possibly a compulsory intervention where they can take full reins of the financial recovery and possibly institute and help with the consequence management of um, the, the previous forensic investigations that are still outstanding. Thank you. Uh, Honorable uh, Zamin. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, my oh. apologies. Yes, yes, continue, Deputy Mayor. No, I'm, I'm using the, the, uh, the laptop for the Deputy Mayor Chair. Oh, okay. No, it's fine. Uh, yes. yes. And so you're speaking to uh, Councillor um, Lamini, who was the council whip in Sunduzi municipality. Uh, no, Chair, we, we, we hear what uh, uh, the portfolio committee members have been saying, but what we want to guarantee the portfolio committee is that we are the municipality at work. 
We understand that uh, we've inherited the Msunduzi municipality. we had a number of challenges and problems as they have been tabled. But we have, we have adopted a strategy of making sure that we do oversight on daily basis. Every time or every day at six o'clock, Chair, we are having these meetings whereby we invite all the relevant departments depends on who is going to be presenting on that particular day. But the, the departments that uh, usually uh, comes to that uh, meeting, it's the, the electricity department, it's the water department, all the departments uh, uh, that are, are, are for this municipality, we, we, we do exchange in terms of reporting. Um, uh, even general managers, and the new municipal manager is attending to those meetings. We'll have on daily basis a three hour session or more uh, uh, doing oversight. You see the issue of electricity uh, whereby the street lights are not, are not working. It's the thing of the past. I think people who have been told the status of Msunduza should come closer and see the current status. We have improved a lot, uh, uh, Chair, if I may share with this committee. Uh, in terms of the percentage of the, of the uh, street lights that have been uh, uh, fixed, I believe it's, it, is, it is around 87%. And we are currently changes, changing the poles that have been uh, uh, dilapidated and we're making sure that we're putting new poles on the street lights. And when you come to town now, it's totally different. The town, the town, the street lights in town are working. Um, and we also engage on daily basis with the water department and where they present to us, where are the challenges in terms of the water past and water pipes. And at and, and same time, on that same meeting, we instruct those uh, uh, involved to go and attend to those uh, 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 problems. And so I think in terms of uh, 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 the changes after we have made this intervention of making sure that we engage on daily basis with our employees. And what, what we have noticed, uh, Chair, as this uh, uh, meeting which sits at, at six o'clock, it's a service delivery intervention a, a committee that we have in the morning. Uh, we have we've identified that the problem that Msunduze has now, even before, it's, it's, it's the employees. We have picked up that the number of employees in Msunduze comes to work and don't do their work, but at the end of, of the month, they're getting paid. But what we are now doing, we are making sure that we push for everyone to be at work, do what he is required or he is required to, to do, and make sure that uh, he is getting bonus or getting paid on the performance uh, or on what he has done on that particular week, uh, on that particular month. And so we are the, 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 the municipality that is, is, is really at work. And the other items that have been raised by the HE as well as COCTA, we are in attendance of those. We want to assure you as this committee that we are in attendance. As we've been given timelines as well by the COCTA, we believe that by that time, we will be producing a very, a very uh, 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 a good uh, uh, presentation in terms of the, pro the progression by the municipality. Let me, let me stand there for now, Chair, thank you. Thank you. Can we, uh, first, I see the names, but I will not uh, know them. Can we first allow the administrators that were cited uh, to deal with the specific matter of security and uh, any other administrative issue that we might uh, have been, uh, that might have been raised in the questions? I'm trying to say, I will not know the names. All I know is what the mayor said, that administrators must uh, have an input here. Um, Anyone 
Anyone can speak? Yes, uh, uh, Nelly Siwa. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is uh, Nelly Siwa. Uh, I'm, I'm the Chief Financial Officer. Uh, Chair, uh, let me acknowledge the fact that, uh, yes, we've had um, a challenge in terms of um, the security cost. Uh, but let me say that uh, starting from um, the previous uh, administrator uh, up to now, we've uh, uh, witnessed that uh, it has started to decline uh, because uh, from the previous administrator up to now, uh, they have forced uh, quite a number of uh, people that were benefiting from um, the security uh, to, um, to be released uh, from benefiting, uh, but it's still high. And we are still uh, doing a further analysis uh, on that. Uh, but it's still a challenge um, that we are not uh, getting feedback uh, from the provincial office of which uh, it has been stated clearly that it cannot be a problem of the municipality uh, in terms of providing security for, for those uh, councillors um, that did not uh, receive um, the the threat uh, analysis. Uh, I'm, I'm well aware that um, the accounting officer as well had a discussion with me yesterday in terms of the same, of which we are still further uh, reducing those uh, in cases where there are no um, uh, threat uh, analysis. So, Chair, oh, on those one, uh, it is uh, being uh, reduced. Uh, as I've indicated, um, we've reduced a lot. And what we have done as well, uh, we have cut a budget to a minimum. Um, the only security that we are providing at this point in time that is high, um, it's on the premises um, uh, in terms of the municipality, as well as uh, on the areas like um, our infrastructure, more especially uh, on our substations that we have picked up uh, an increase uh, in terms of um, the vandalization. So those are the areas that are increasing, but on the security for the councillors, uh, we have decreased a, a lot uh, uh, on those ones. Chair, uh, on the issue of um, uh, the employee that is being paid uh, but is no longer in uh, um, was no longer in the employment uh, on that one we've uh, served a uh, summons and uh, in terms of um, the recovery I know we had a meeting with legal uh, where they were preparing summons uh, to to recover that amount and uh, we will be getting a progress uh, to that effect because uh, they were tracing the address uh, of that employee because he is no longer uh, in the employment uh, of the municipality. On the issue of um, the payroll, uh, where uh, it has been raised um, uh, in terms of what are we doing uh, to address um, the challenges that we've had uh, in terms of payroll. Chair, as we speak, uh, we've got uh, forensic uh, investigations um, that are happening at payroll. Uh, Chair, I'm happy to mention that we've suspended uh, about uh, four to five employees at payroll. Uh, that uh, we found uh, to be guilty in terms of misconduct. Uh, I think about three of them, we've got clear cases of misconduct uh, that we are very much confident, um, confident that we will uh, win those cases, but we thought uh, we will allow um, the uh, forensic investigators uh, to finish um, those cases. 
Uh, so we are busy cleaning up. And as we speak, uh, we are reviewing um, the system in terms of the financial system so that we can segregate um, the function. Yesterday, I had a discussion uh, with us as well, where we are reviewing um, the delegations, uh, including the e-filing, uh, where I'm taking control of administration to remove uh, the incumbent uh, that was part of um, the um, um, the system uh, since um, the manager and the accountant um, that was uh, part of the system has since been uh, suspended. So we are cleaning the system in terms of um, the payroll. So those ones were picked up um, by um, the management and were since uh, been suspended. On the UIFW uh, chair, the uh, council adopted a, a strategy and a policy uh, in terms of um, the UIF uh, reduction strategy. Uh, we were assisted by National Treasury on this strategy. We are currently busy with um, the workshops uh, in terms of workshopping the management on how we can reduce um, the irregular, unauthorized, and fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Uh, we've monitored um, that there is a, a slight decline in the irregular. Uh, on the side uh, of the unauthorized, uh, it's mainly affected uh, by our data, but I'll talk to that one uh, a bit later. Uh, on our salary bill, uh, Chair, we are still within the norm. We are sitting at 26%, uh, which is okay, but that doesn't mean that uh, we must uh, uh, blow our expenditure. That's the reason uh, on the reviewed uh, organogram that um, the MR is currently assessing. Uh, we have... Um, we had to revisit uh, with an intention uh, of, cut, of cutting down um, the, the bloated structure uh, so that uh, it doesn't be, uh, uh, become so high uh, in terms of um, the cost. Um, so with our cost containment strategy, so all the business units are presenting uh, to the administrator and MM uh, so that um, that expenditure can be reduced. On the issue of consequence management, Chair, I must say that, yes, we had a challenge uh, where we've realized that we were a bit slow uh, in terms of uh, the implementation of the consequence management. We've had sessions starting from last year where we were meeting uh, with all the prosecutors and um, the presiding officers. We've, been, we've given them timelines uh, in terms of how long um, they are expected uh, to conclude um, the cases that have been allocated uh, to them. So they are meeting um, almost every week now. And we are seeing a progress now uh, in terms of um, the cases that have been assigned a uh, chair. And this report are reported to, to council in terms of progress uh, on a quarterly basis and to MPEG. And the MPEG is monitoring the progress uh, in terms of um, the consequence uh, management. Chair, on the issue of under expenditure in terms of a uh, capital grant, yes, Umsunduzi, um, going far back, uh, we have a challenge that if we start the financial year for the first uh, three months uh, or four months of the financial year, we, we don't generally spend. Um, so wh what we are trying to do now uh, is to uh, make sure that uh, we look at our procurement plan and do MMS head our sessions with the management so that uh, we try and very early in the, like 
before the financial, before the start of the financial year, we force we force management uh, to start the procurement processes so that in the next financial year, uh, everything has been done so that the expenditure is escalated. Because every financial year we spend very late, but in most cases we do reach hundred percent. Like we make last financial year. We spend 100% so as um, uh, WSIG and uh, quite a few grants. But our challenge is that we don't start early enough uh, in terms of the beginning of the financial year. So that's the strategy that we are trying to adopt uh, so that we can then accelerate um, the expenditure in terms of um, the, the financial year. So we've been given uh, letters and the financial portfolio as well uh, will be meeting with the project champions so that they can come up with um, the strategies in terms of how they can speed up uh, e e expenditure. Chair, the six o'clock meetings with the leadership, um, they do assist us a lot uh, in terms of um, the service delivery, the cleaning of the city, as well as um, the um, street lights um, that are being changed uh, regularly. And we can see uh, our traffic is visible now uh, in the streets, of which it was something that wasn't happening uh, before. Uh, so uh, e Troika is meeting them between six and eight uh, so that they can give uh, e Troika a plan of what um, they are going to do. Chair, on the issue of um, our aging infrastructure, everything uh, it's relying on our revenue collection. Chair, it's a fact that as a municipality, we've, we have a challenge uh, in terms of our cash. As finance, we, we sat down and we did an analysis uh, in terms of uh, our challenges in terms of our cash. And we realized that um, there, is some, there is nothing that we can do without uh, recovering the 5.5 billion that we are being owed. Uh, as a municipality. As we speak, uh, we've developed a plan uh, that started on the 1st of September, where we are going uh, house to house, business to business, to try and recover uh, everything that we are being owed. We've got um, electricity as well as water that are with us on the ground, because what we've picked up, uh, our data, it cannot be recovered while we're sitting in our offices because our people are really stealing a lot. Uh, Chair, in, in September alone, we did 398 properties. Out of that 398, 67% um, had T-joints. That means that you cannot even disconnect or do anything. That means those, those people are not paying the municipality. Uh, for one reason or the other. And then 33% 30, of that uh, are tempering. Now, that means we are losing uh, that revenue. And um, as now we are auditing all those areas, people are starting to come forward and they are even telling us uh, who else uh, is stealing. And if we, 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 we think that uh, by sitting in the offices and calling them to come and pay, they will never come and pay. So we, we've developed a, a project plan that will run up until next year, uh, where we finance their alternating the management, uh, because you have to go as a group. Uh, because if you go alone, you get uh, all those people that are trying to bribe you uh, to say, if I give you this, uh, uh, then you mustn't disconnect, uh, disconnect me. So it, it is uh, really assisting us as a municipality. For the month of September alone, we were able to collect 580 million from an average collection of uh, 430. So we, we have seen an increase 
uh, of 580 million. Hence, uh, Usalka is giving us this award. It's very, very difficult uh, because we've got audit, uh, Auditor General on site and also we have to make sure that we recover as much as, uh, as possible. We want to make sure that we are cleaning um, the data's book of 5.5 billion and we recover uh, as much as, as possible. And also we uh, write off what is uncollectable uh, in terms of um, the data book because our indigent uh, in terms of our data, uh, it's not what it's supposed to be. But what also um, that we have picked up as a municipality, um, our employees were starting to collude with our customers. We had to suspend eight employees um, that were receiving bribes uh, from the customers um, uh, for, for not uh, disconnecting them. So we have a serious challenge. Hence, uh, we have started this process of auditing uh, individual uh, customers. I'm afraid, uh, Chair, we need the intervention in terms of government. We cannot have government that is tempering or direct connections. Uh, we really need to spread uh, this news to, to everyone that the government cannot be involved uh, in this tempering. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I was told uh, if Mr. Mapalova is in, can I, I just want uh, to complete this administrative uh, part of it. If not, uh, the district municipal. I'm in, I'm in, Chairperson. I'm in. Then. Over to uh, Chairperson. Can I? I, I sorry, Chair. I, I could not get to the question. I had to rush to to council because there was an urgent matter uh, that needed my attention in the council meeting that is currently uh, sitting. Um, so can I request maybe the CFO to assist me so that I can respond immediately? Um, thank you, Chair. I, I think, MM, the issues um, that are really uh, burning are the issue of consequence management, uh, where we are not doing good, and um, the issue of service delivery uh, in terms of um, electricity and water, where customers uh, are really complaining uh, in terms of um, the service <coughs> delivery uh, issues. Not and MM, the issue of uh, us failure to spend uh, in terms of funds. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee. The KZN Quota Delegation, Provincial Treasury, National T Treasury, the mayors who are part of this uh, gathering, and all councillors who are here. No, I think, Chairperson, we are working very hard. There's a lot of backlog around the issue of consequence management. Council has appointed the Municipal Disciplinary Board, um, and some of the cases, Chairperson, have been referred to the Municipal Disciplinary uh, Board for them to process. Uh, I am aware that the disciplinary uh, board in the month of October alone has set two meetings uh, to process those issues. Actually, even now, uh, there was a report that uh, I was supposed to present to council on some of the internal audit forensic reports uh, where we're taking very strong consequence management. So that side chair is taken care of. Uh, we will ensure that all the, the, the matters are processed to finality we have given ourselves a, 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 a time frame chair of saying that by February uh, uh, 2023, we should have made a significant uh, 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 prog progress in terms of the consequence management issues. And these even affect some of the senior managers, uh, past and present uh, chairperson, uh, such that I, I will be liaising on certain issues with the case at NCOCTA so that I can request the, the assistance of KZN, because there's a lot of 
of of of of backlog chair. But we are uh, uh, adopting a zero tolerance chair in terms of the officials who are found wanting, whether it's a senior manager or any other official within the municipality. We are adopting a, a clean governance, a clean administration approach, and 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 the the national treasury is assisting us as we're a non-delegated municipality uh, to work uh, on those uh, uh, issues and the the, 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 the provincial culture. On the service delivery side, Chairperson, I have established we are sitting uh, every week, Chairperson. There are two meetings that are sitting. Is a committee called CAPEX that is sitting every week to look at the expenditure. We are also sitting every Friday, Chair, to look at the particular grants like MIG, the Water Services Infrastructure Grant, the, the Integrated, uh, national electricity uh, grant, the INEP, uh, uh, to ensure that we are moving. In it is true that we are not uh, moving, Chair. Our target by the 31st of December, Chair, we are targeting that we should have reached 60% uh, 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 in, in, in all the, the grants that we, we, we have been given. We are, because one of the weak areas, Chair, has been around the, the, the PMU, the Project Management Unit of the municipality. We have reinforced that today, just before this meeting, I was receiving, I, I, I accepted a support from COCTA. They have deployed a service provider that will be working with the municipality chair to, to work around the PMU, to reposition PMU in such a way that we will be able to, to implement a projects on time. One of the things we have adopted chair is forward planning where service providers that will be implementing projects uh, in the following financial year will be, will, be, will be appointed by June. So that comes the 1st of July, Chairperson, we are ready to, to, to go. Also, we have received support from COCTA, uh, a service provider today that will be assisting us to, to, to work around the area of uh, electricity. There are a lot of challenges, Chairperson. We are also negotiating with the Department of uh, Minerals and, and, and energy uh, resources, a DMRE, uh, without, because I've not received the letter. I had a meeting last week, uh, instructed by the mayor to meet with the deputy minister and, and the officials of the DME. And there has been a, 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 a provision chair to say that they will be funding us to build a substation that will service the CPD and, and the surrounding uh, uh, areas. In terms of waste collection, Chairperson, we have improved a lot uh, around that particular area, Chairperson. If you can come to our town, yes, we're not 100%, but we are following our schedule in terms of ensuring that we, we, we collect uh, uh, waste. In terms of the landfill side, Chairperson, I can say we're almost 100%. The Department of Economic Affairs and Environmental Affairs, Chairperson, is, is assisting us. And if you can go today, uh, Chairperson, uh, 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 in that landfill site, you will see the, the amount of investment uh, uh, that council has done. But also on top of that, Chairperson, we're working around the labor piece at the municipality uh, by strengthening the functioning of the local labor forum. Because we believe that if that forum is strengthened, uh, uh, it will then uh, ensure that we're able to deal with other issues that are raised by, by, by labor. But also, Chairperson, we have identified uh, over time claims. I have, I have, uh, I've been, I've been given a list of 20 employees who are uh, the highest earners when it comes to overtime, and we are working on that to investigate. We are going to take very strong action against general managers who are endorsing. Uh, uh, such unscrupulous claims that are made by em employees. The other area, Chair, it has to do with the shift, the, 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 the standby allowance, where you'll find that it revolves around certain people. In fact, we have a situation, Chair, where employees budget for, for, for overtime. It has become part of their own uh, uh, budget. But also on Monday, Chairperson, we are having a workshop with National Treasury, Kavita, who's part of this uh, meeting today, they will be running a worship on the financial recovery plan because we want to invest a lot of time there to ensure that we are able to, to turn the, 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 municipal, uh, the municipality around in terms of ensuring that we do what is due. But what is positive, Chair, 
is that the council is providing the necessary uh, support to us as administration and the necessary guidance in a number of areas. Our, our recommendations as we forward them to council chairperson, they are being uh, 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 implemented. The, the, they are being accepted by, 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 by council. So as an accounting officer of the municipality, I can say without fear or favor, Chairperson, that there's a lot of political will that has been shown by the Council of Musundozi to, 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 to turn around the, 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 the situation. The MPEC also, I had a very uh, good meeting with the Chairperson of MPEC since I'm new, uh, and we have agreed on a particular path that MPEC will be assisted to ensure that in those areas that they are supposed to investigate, they are able to investigate. Also, we are looking at the systems because we have identified uh, the issue of the ICT as one of the problematic areas. I've already requested National Treasury to assist us to ensure that our systems are M-score compliant. We have written to Mr. Hatting uh, this week to, 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 uh, to ask for that support from uh, uh, National Treasury. But I, I, I am optimistic, Chair, that we are going to turn around this situation. It's not a situation, Chair, that we are proud of, but there is willingness administratively, there is willingness uh, 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 politically to ensure that uh, 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 the municipality is able to perform uh, its uh, uh, constitutional and legal uh, obligation of taking uh, services uh, closer to people. We, we, we want to come here, Chairperson, to, pre to, to present progress. We don't want to come here to, 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 to be on your red books, uh, 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 so to say, Chairperson. So with the support from National Cogta, from Provincial Cogta, National Treasury, and other departments, Chairperson, we are working around. On the human settlement side, uh, Chairperson, we will be meeting with the HOD, uh, KZN, uh, Human Settlement Department, uh, to, for them to assist us to ensure that we accelerate the implementation of the of some of the project, but council last week gave us a mandate, chairperson, to proceed uh, in a number of projects uh, uh, in terms of uh, 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 implementation. Thank you very much, uh, uh, honourable chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to uh, guide the meeting towards a conclusion. I know there were questions directed to the district municipality. I just want to check if they are uh, uh, around. Yes. Uh, Chair, sorry. Uh, can I just please have a follow-up question? Uh, I'll be very brief. Um, I didn't get a response uh, regarding the 37 ward committees that are non-functional in Msunduzi. And that is a matter of great concern because that is where you know the people that uh, they're, that they're, the municipality is responsible for, in terms of uh, service delivery. That is uh, that is the forum where they get to interface with their councillor and express their you know their concerns and get feedback. So if there is all thirty seven of them, uh, chairperson are non functional, uh, it is really a, a great you know of great concern. So could I please just get uh, a response on that or what happened with those thirty seven non functional ward committees? Thank you so much, Chairperson. Uh, then that changes my approach to then take other follow-ups, but take into account that we have not allowed the district municipality to respond. We have not allowed uh, COCTA. We have not allowed Treasury. But you can follow up because uh, it's Msunduzi that is at the center. I will take the hands as the, I see them there. Honorable Mbumza. Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, I did a uh, uh, network had been battling me here. Th okay. Thanks, Chair. Chair, as the portfolio committee, we have not been privy to the contents of the Santos, uh, Maninal, and uh, Morales Section 106 uh, reports. We want to know what are the specific uh, recommendations that have been implemented. And uh, and uh, and uh, to those what are to those that are still in progress. Again, uh, we we must, uh, uh, of course, uh, 
appreciate uh, the good work of uh, uh, apparently filling the critical uh, vacancies in the service delivery uh, portfolio. Um, but uh, can the mayor um, or the MM uh, make us uh, privy to the network uh, plan development? Um, that the mayor was talking about, whether it is uh, submitted to the portfolio secretary so that we may have a look at it. Thanks, Jay. Uh, Honorable Pleasure. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I just wanted to get a sense of uh, of some 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 issues from the CFO. The CFO speaks to four, 580 million uh, that is collected, uh, and I commend that. And then, uh, uh, in terms of re revenue collection, Chair, and uh, he speaks to that particular amount being collected from individual customers and and it speak of them as uh, as households and people uh, that are in the in the in the government so i, I just want to check how much of that of uh, 580 million was collected from businesses and government departments uh, because i believe that uh, and then in terms of uh, the indigent list, what nature of collection has he put in place? Because I'm sure uh, I've read within the, the that they are not able to, to deal with the indigent list in the municipality. And then the last one, Chair, being, uh, isn't uh, that particular um, a program of two bin bag system and and separation at source and is it not a duplication of what we are having uh, within the, the 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 portfolio committee with in in terms of the CWP uh, uh, is it not the is it not supposed to be the same functions that uh, characterize what CWP is doing already and and can they clarify me and as to what is the total budget of that particular program uh, and uh, yes uh, thank you very much thank you <clears throat> i'm trying to manage the meeting uh, for now i will only take members of parliament members of the portfolio committee if there's any hand they are making follow-ups despite the fact that you did not finish uh, answering but I want to finish them. Well, I don't see, seem to see any further hand from their side. I'll now allow, uh, unfortunately, I, I, I see Mkize there. So can I allow you, before I will come back to uh, Mr. Mapolova, Mkize? Uh, maybe it's an old hand. Then can we move to uh, uh, Mr. Mapalova? No, th th thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, the, 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 the Section 106 uh, reports, the, the uh, by Mora was dealing with the ITT um, with the ITT issue where ITT was appointed by the municipality um, as an implementing agent for various projects without following a particular SCM process. And, and, and around 250 million was then transferred to, to them. And then later it transpired that IDT had no capacity to fulfill the responsibilities that they had agreed to fulfill uh, with the municipality. Uh, and then um, 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 there was a tussle between IDT and the municipality around the exact amount that must be returned 
by RTT because they had failed to perform according to the civil agreement. This procurement was also flagged by AG as irregular and, 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 and classified as material irregularity. Now, there are about 15 to 18 recommendations share. Uh, the uh, one around the recovery, um, the other one around taking disciplinary action around staff members who were involved, you know, in this. Uh, so in, in our discussion with the, with the legal uh, department yesterday, we agreed that in terms of the IGR Framework Act chair, we must exhort, since ITT is part of the a, a, a state owned uh, entities. The IGR framework requires that you must exhaust the, the, all the internal processes before you can take the matter externally. So we, we then agreed that we will be writing to the minister uh, because ITT, as a report I got, was that they are failing to cooperate with the municipality. So we then agreed that we will be drafting a letter for the mayor to the minister and also drafting another letter to the chairperson of the ITT board so that we can have a, a meeting uh, between ITT and the municipality so that we can resolve these issues without taking one another to, 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 to court. But we are proceeding, Chair, with consequence management. We are proceeding with consequence management. Uh, we are proceeding with ensuring that we recover you know what is due to the to the municipality for the services that were not uh, 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 rendered in terms of the of the of the service level agreement. Another uh, report by 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 Manilal is dealing with procurement of services around security, uh, Chairperson, uh, uh, where a particular security company chair was given a, a lot of money to the amount of 255 uh, million. And again, there, there are certain officials that are flagged in that report for the municipality to take action. There is recovery, recovery that must be done uh, to that particular company. In terms of recovery, legal services is dealing with that particular matter. We are dealing with the, with the issue of, uh, of, um, of ensuring that we implement consequence management in areas that we need to do. But, we, 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 if there would be an appetite chair uh, in another uh, session of the portfolio committee, we will be able to, 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 to zoom in into those uh, particular reports. But also KZN Helicopter is also on our neck in terms of ensuring that every recommendation contained in those two reports are implemented by the municipality. This is what we are doing. I've also had three sessions chair with the AG, as Sanganan was saying earlier, where I have been updating them about actions that I've taken uh, 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 to ensure that these recommendations are implemented. I have submitted about three, four reports uh, uh, to the AG to give progress. The, the next one will be next week, where we're updating AG, and we'll uh, 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 expect AG to, to, to respond to us, to say, uh, are they satisfied with the response that we have given, or uh, 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 the other reports were going, as I was saying earlier, we're going to council today. That's why I had to, to move out to go and present those reports to, to council. But another element, Chairperson, that we must, we are working on is to strengthen our internal audit uh, committee. I mean, audit committee and internal audit unit chair, because one observation I've made is that it is very weak in terms of personnel and the necessary skills that are required. Since we are a secondary municipality chairperson, the municipality is big. Uh, it will require a lot of resources to ensure that it is able to implement consequence management as it is uh, 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 expected. Th thank you, Chair. Uh, Honorable Mayor, uh, I'm trying to uh, come closer to winding up the meeting. So as you say whatever, you must also say it in that context that we are also trying to come closer to winding up. I'm sure the other departments, the focus was on um, Sunduzi because that is what we're about. The rest of us, 
were there to provide support. Uh, Honorable Mayor. Uh, th th thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. I think on Section 106, the MM has already provided answers because that is where we, 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 we felt that there was a lack of implementation. But as the report says, we have moved quite a, a long distance now in implementing both the reports and <clears throat> Chair, uh, I, I, I want to believe, of course, we will engage KZN Cocta here if they allow us, because we can share that report with the portfolio committee. That's the first one, because whatever that is outstanding of those reports in the main is that that needs to be investigated by the law enforcement agencies, which we have reported according to the recommendations. That's the first one, Chair. But in terms of our award committees, our award committees are now functional. We, we, we could easily say we are now sitting at 100%. Of course, there's one word where we know that there are still outstanding issues that need to be attended to that arise out of the award, election, award, award committee elections, which we are still attending to. But in the main, on what committees here are functional only in Ward 27 to be specific, where it's not functional. I'm just mentioning that uh, so that it's clear we know exactly where the challenge is chairperson. Uh, we, 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 we can clearly forward the network development plan to the secretariat for them to share with the committee because it is very clear it has got timelines, it has got budget expectations, requirements, and all and how we are going to be implementing that. <clears throat> the last one, Chair, of the 5.5 billion that we are owed, that we are collecting, 70% of that is from households. 4%, uh, I won't say only 4% because it's still huge if it was, if it was, Chair, please note that, if it was 239 million. Uh, it was from the government and the rest from business. We are aggressively collecting. We note the economic conditions of our people. Hence, as we are busy collecting, we are also embarking on a public education in terms of ensuring that people apply for indigent to be registered as indigents because, of course, in terms of states as a our indigenous register is very low. We are supposed to be sitting at least at about 44,000, but we are sitting at 6,000 as it stands now. Then that says there's still much work that needs to be done. Of course, that one can be attributed to many factors, Chair, but we, we, we are embarking on a public education when it comes to that one. But Chair, since you said we, you are moving towards closure to us, it is always a pleasure to come and also get the wisdom of the committee because our commitment as this administration is to make sure that we make this municipality work for us to be in a position to really say we are changing the lives of our people for the better. We are in a process of creating better communities it's this administration that is committed to that chair and we can assure the portfolio committee, we can assure the parliament of the Republic that when it comes to what is constitutionally our role, we are committed to implementing chairperson. Thank you very much for affording us this opportunity. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I see uh, uh, Mr. Katide. Can we hear you? No, thank you very much, Chair. It's Katite from Cocta, EDG. My okay. apology for, for having joined you late. We had a network problem. I joined, I think, 10 minutes, 15 minutes after you had started already. But uh, in conclusion, I think we, we, we do accept the comments and the recommendations made by members. And uh, we believe that those recommendations are in line with the discussions that are ongoing between the MEC as well as the leadership of Musundos. 
as we indicated that a meeting was held, I think two months ago. So we are believing that when we submit back to the MEC in February, 2023, a clear progress report on those issues that were raised by the MEC, we will be able to have dealt with some of the critical challenges that led the municipality, the municipality into uh, section 139. I can confidently say, Chair, that if, if you look at the reports that we submitted, the main reasons, I think they were about five. On what committees, I think they are almost there now. They are sitting at around 50%. So we have flagged them as, as yellow, which means that if they can push before the end of December uh, to have fully functional, then by February, when we compile a report, at least it will move that yellow to green. And, and as a result, we'll be able to con reconsider and review the decision. The second one was the incomplete project and the lack of operational maintenance and repairs. I think we have also flagged them yellow there because I think what the mayor has just said, they were sitting at 44% in the previous financial year. I'm not too sure in this financial year, Chair, our report suggested that they have just dropped drastically. I think they are below 2% according to our own figures. I know that they would dispute, but we have indicated that our assessment suggested that if they can still push, uh, because in the province, I think we've got about three municipalities that have managed to go beyond uh, 5%, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, 5%. So if they can still push more on that one, on the ONM especially, they can move from yellow to green, and we are working very strong, very hard with them uh, to, to, to revise their budget so that during the adjustment budget, they can be able to reflect this as well as in the next financial year's budget. The other issues, and we believe that the issues of, of, of infrastructure will be, will be dealt there and there because they were on the right track in the previous financial year, but in the budget for this financial year, I think they've just let down. And you could see some projects that they were planning to, to, to implement on, 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 operation, on operation and repairs. The third issue was around the allegation of maladministration, fraud, and corruption, and the oversight structures that were poorly, fun, poorly functioning. So I think on those, we have also flagged them as yellow uh, because they are able to deal with, 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 with these issues of uh, Section uh, 106 uh, forensic reports. Uh, we are satisfied with the way that they are dealing with uh, consequence management is being applied. They just need to push a little bit to move from yellow to green. And, uh, and uh, the only challenge I think that we have also raised before is the alignment between what they are doing with what the law enforcement agencies are supposed to be doing. So I think if the committee can assist on that one, I think we'll be able to, to flash this one and, and address it once and for all. We have flagged the fourth pillar, which is poor cash flow. SCM challenges, poor contract management is red. I think that is their focal area. We, we don't have a problem as such. We've seen some strides a bit on SCM and contract management, but the poor cash flow is the main cause of all their problems. And I think the plan that they've developed and started to implement as reported in this morning, if they can sustain that plan and improve on it before the end of February, the MSC has indicated that he is prepared to go back to cabinet and actually make a recommendation there because that was the gist of the reasons why they ended up in section 139. They had no money as a going concern. They were struggling to sustain their infrastructure and maintenance and also making sure that the communities are serviced. I think the last one on pillar five, which was the cause also for the, for the intervention was the issue of uh, vacancies at senior management level. But I think they have dealt with that one in terms of suspending those that were, were alleged to have been corrupt and involved in criminal activities, and they've started to fill. We are just saying to them, can they fill these vacancies before the end of December? Because they've done the adverts and everything. It's only two that are outstanding, which were also created recently. I think one was created recently in July. The other one 
was created in the previous in the previous financial year. So I think that one they should have finalized the matters and make sure that. So I think they are at a verge, and they are. If I had to show you how we have flagged this, you will see that out of all municipalities uh, with, that are under interventions, they are the leading municipality that has got the potential of moving out of administrations. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Um, can I get uh, National Treasury, Kavita, reply? Thank you, Chair. Chair, I just want to respond to Honorable Brink and some of the other uh, members who have raised issues around whether a Section 139.5 intervention is not uh, you know, appropriate for this municipality. And I was not sure at what point I should respond, but I think before I, I say yes or no, I think I just want to explain the Section 139 intervention framework at a very high level. So basically, Section 139 of the Constitution provides for different interventions for different types of problems in the municipality. So a Section 139.1 intervention and a pure Section 139.1 intervention is when a municipality fails to fulfill an executive obligation, but doesn't necessarily have a financial problem. So the failure is that to fulfill the obligation, and that is when you use Section 139.1. You could also use Section 139.1 when there are financial problems, but these financial problems must be relatively easy to resolve, and then the intervention should also request that a financial recovery plan be developed for the municipality. Now, in the case of Umzunduzi, when the intervention was invoked, there was no request from the province to actually develop this financial recovery plan for the municipality. So the municipality on their own requested that we assist them. But if the moment the municipality now starts to show signs that it has a financial crisis and the criteria for a financial crisis is clearly specified in the MFMA. The moment the municipality enters a financial crisis, then section 139.1 is no longer appropriate. And then the province is compelled to invoke a mandatory intervention in the municipality in terms of section 139.5. But most provinces don't do that. Most provincial interventions are driven by the provincial cocktails, and there's still a preference amongst provincial cocktails to go for a discretionary rather than a mandatory intervention. And this is part of the messaging and the advocacy that National Treasury is starting, you know, has started last year, that if a municipality is in a crisis, because the municipality is in crisis, the number is increasing every year. And obviously, discretionary interventions, it's quite evident by now, they are not really helping the situation. So with the case of Umzunduzi, in the last quarter, of, of the, the municipal financial year, which was the end of the 2021-22 financial year, the municipality met the criteria for a financial crisis. And because they met it in one quarter, we are reluctant to immediately say, let's invoke a mandatory intervention. We are also aware of the change in leadership at the municipality. So we will be checking in the first quarter of this financial year, the results are now available. And in the next quarter of the municipal financial year, whether they are still meeting the criteria for a financial, uh, for a mandatory intervention, and then we will recommend to the province, because we're not allowed or we cannot, not that we're not allowed, we cannot invoke a mandatory intervention directly in the municipality. It has to come from the province. And we will then recommend to the province that this is now the appropriate course of action. But just to give comfort um, to the members of, of, of the, um, the portfolio committee, the financial recovery plan that we are helping the municipality with now is will be the same kind of plan that we would have developed anyway under a mandatory intervention. So if the municipality is wants to avoid a mandatory intervention, then they will definitely pay more attention to the proper implementation of this plan that we are now putting forward to them uh, next week. So, Chair, from the Treasury side, I just wanted to clarify, um, you know, um, the issue of the mandatory intervention versus the discretionary intervention. 
And then also to point out, you know, that Section 154 support is supposed to be provided to municipalities, irrespective of whether they have any problems or not. You know, and when the when a municipality meets the criteria for an intervention, uh, particularly a um, mandatory intervention, support cannot replace that need for an intervention. The province has to intervene, and then the province can incorporate support as one of the strategies to assist the municipality in its uh, in its recovery. So, Chair, from from the Treasury side, I just wanted to clarify. Um, you know, the whole issue of the mandatory intervention. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I think that helps us to come closer to closing the meeting. I think uh, critical issues that we should note as the portfolio committee, as well as all of us who are part of the meeting, is that uh, repeatedly it has been said now there is political will and uh, there is administrative action. So by implication, we should give uh, the municipality that opportunity to make sure that they turn around the situation in the municipality. On service delivery, it was said there is improvement. Generally, most of the people who are speaking here no one categorically denies that there is improvement in terms of service delivery. There are better plans that are being put in place. And uh, now also the issue of uh, national treasury developing this uh, financial recovery plan. And I think the last point uh, indicated by uh, national treasury it talks to the time frames that uh, honorable members were asking for. I think it did come out of the presentations to say the MEC has given you three months to say beyond that, they would have to review what comes out of it. Then it all means now that we must all work towards whatever desire that we have. If, we, if you are the local municipality, you want to get out of intervention, this is the opportunity. Those who are supposed to provide support, they must do so uh, to make sure that by uh, the end of the three months, you are out of intervention. And intervention, it is correct, is driven by the province. And uh, then Treasury is brought in to make sure that uh, when you move to 139 subsection 5, it's not a, a decision that gets taken uh, lightly, but I think it's voluntary now. Let's use that. So in other words, I think uh, slightly different from the time the portfolio committee uh, visited the municipality or engaged the municipality in 2020. Um, then there were some trust deficit between yourselves and those who are consuming your services. Uh, but the picture that we are getting is beginning to say you are beginning to change that picture. But our last message, because as uh, members of parliament, we are public representative. So you better as well improve greatly on your interaction with the consumers of your services uh, in your area, so that it doesn't necessarily require that they should all be petitioning parliament, petitioning the provincial legislature, you must engage them. Find another way as well to report back to them some of the changes that you are, you are effecting. My last point is as the portfolio committee, we are confronted by a situation in the country where 
there's this general perception that uh, local government is in disarray. So whenever we see possibilities of changing that picture, now Msunduzi, we highly appreciate that and would want to say, let you be a good example, as was indicated here, that amongst the dysfunctional municipalities, there are signs that you are moving away from that. Let's completely move away from it. Uh, that will help us as the portfolio committee as well. In other words, we nobody wants to uh, be called upon to interfere with the work of a municipality. The constitution guarantees you that authority that you must provide those services. Otherwise, thank you very much for the information. I'm sure the committee might have a different perception now uh, than before we got to this engagement. Otherwise, thank you very much for the participation. MEC, the, the delegation from the province, from national, provincial treasury, national treasury, district municipality, as well as the local municipality. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Chair. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, of course, we start, of course. Thank you very much, Chairperson. All the best. Thank you very much.